happening to both parties from coast to coast. Then tributes are rolling in from fans, stars, and comedians honoring the life and legacy of SNL's Norm Macdonald. He died after a private battle with cancer. He was only 61. We're going to take a look back at the moments that had us all laughing. Plus, we're going to give our regards to Broadway. We're going to bring you inside our late night. We helped celebrate the grand opening of some of the most beloved shows of all time. It was epic, and there were a lot of laughs on the fourth hour, I hear. Nathan Lane stopping by. Let's yeah. press play. All right, and get, get this show. party started. Because it's time for Today, Today in 30. 30. NBC's Jacob Soboroff joins us now from Sacramento. Jacob, good morning. Savannah, good morning to you. Gavin Newsom's going to go back to work right here at the California State Capitol this morning after what NBC News projected was a decisive victory in that recall election. The governor called it humbling, a validation of his leadership, allowing him to continue to lead the most populous state in the union. Californians, and thank you for rejecting this recall. Overnight, Governor Gavin Newsom declaring victory, with California voters rejecting a months-long effort to remove him from office. Newsom calling the no vote a validation of his policy priorities. We said yes to science. We said yes to vaccines. We said yes to ending this pandemic. Following early tight yes polls, Newsom received support from big-name Democrats, including President Biden, who campaigned alongside him. Folks, send a message to the nation. Courage matters. Leadership matters. Larry Elder, the conservative talk radio host and replacement candidate, who received the most votes of the 46 running, had indicated he wouldn't accept the results. Whether or not you win or lose, will you accept the results of the election tomorrow? I think we all ought to be looking at election integrity, no matter whether you're a Democrat, an independent, or a Republican. Late Tuesday, he addressed voters. We may have lost the, the battle, but we are going to win the war. Caitlyn Jenner, the reality star, and another of the replacement candidates spoke out as well. This state deserves better than Gavin Newsom. Unfortunately, it looks like they're not going to get that. The campaign was set against the backdrop of multiple crises in the Golden State. Record wildfires, COVID, homelessness, and rising violent crime. But one year ahead of a scheduled gubernatorial election, Californians gave Newsom a vote of confidence. This will be something to definitely, you know, keep him on his toes, put a little interest in little areas that need more attention. Jacob, I'm sure the analysts are already looking into this. What factors ultimately led to the recall effort failing? At the end of the day, Savannah, California is still a two to one Democratic state. That's a number that's increased since the last recall election here, which resulted in Arnold Schwarzenegger becoming our governor in California. And on top of that, people are supportive of Governor Newsom's policies, particularly around COVID with masking and vaccine mandates. Savannah. Uh, Jacob Soberoff at the State House after a late night there. Thank you so much. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad <laughs> Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We are back with another comedy legend gone too soon. Yeah, it was just so sad to hear about Norm Macdonald yesterday, the SNL alum, comedian, 
and writer, passing away nine years after he was diagnosed with cancer, a diagnosis that he chose not to reveal to anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to keep it private. NBC News Now anchor Joe Fire joins us with more on his life. Hey, Joe. Hey there. Good morning. So he was born in Quebec City, Canada, but it was here in the U.S. that Norm Macdonald gained fame. The comedi comedy genius was also deeply private. His producing partner and friend, Laurie Joe Hoekstra, is saying he never wanted the diagnosis to affect the way the audience or any of his loved ones saw him. Norm Macdonald made people laugh on stage and on screen. Live from New York, Saturday night. Tuesday, the comedy legend passed away at the age of 61 after privately battling cancer for nine years. McDonald joined Saturday Night Live in 1993, known for his impersonations of an array of famous faces, including Senator Bob Dole and actor Burt Reynolds on those famed Celebrity Jeopardy segments. Yeah, I found this backstage, uh, oversized hat. It's funny. No, it's not. Sure it is. It's funny. It's funny because it's uh, bigger than a you know, normal hat. His weekend update segments mocking O.J. Simpson made headlines. Well, it is finally official. Murder is legal in the state of California. <laughs> McDonald left SNL in 1998. He claimed shortly after that an executive was a friend of Simpson's and objected to his jokes, which NBC denied. On Tuesday, SNL tweeted, There are so many things that we'll miss about Norm, from his unflinching integrity to his generosity to his consistent ability to surprise. But most of all, he was just plain funny. After SNL, he continued to make audiences laugh. I bet the board is spelled B-O-R-E-D. This morning, believe it or not, after all these years, making his Today Show debut. It's almost unbelievable. I know. I've never been on the Today Show, unless you count me when I used to stand out there. And <laughs> wave. Well, McDonald kept his cancer battle hidden, he talked frankly about the disease in earlier I'm years. Sure. I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure if the cancer dies, I mean, if you die, the cancer also dies at exactly the same time. So that, to me, is not a loss, that's a draw. That's a, you know what I mean? Tributes are pouring in. Molly Shannon remembers his writing was like poetry. Steve Martin calling him one of a kind. And Adam Sandler writing, an incredible dad, a great friend, a legend. And Seth Meyers honoring a role model last night. He was the gold standard. Uh, rest in peace, Norm. Now to the reason we've never been so happy to be a little tired this morning. We were up late. Yeah. Little tired. Lights on Broadway, they've been dark for 18 months because of the pandemic. But last night, we all had the honor of helping reopen the doors on the Great White Way. Three of the most beloved shows of all time. We're talking about Hamilton, Wicked, and The Lion King. They all joined forces to open together on the very same night. And we were lucky enough to be front and center for the action. We laughed, we cried, and some of us even sang. Ooh. We are here at the Lion King. The house is open! Welcome, Hamilton! Broadway is back! Broadway's back! You're excited. I am so excited. Pump! Because you know why? Why? Because Broadway's back! Yes, baby! It has been 552 days since the Great White Way has been all lit up, and audiences, they were amped. Oh my gosh! We're going to Broadway! Hakuna! Everybody go see a show! Are you excited? I'm excited! You're so excited! I'm so excited! I defy gravity. Over at Wicked, ticket holders were ready to defy gravity. No wizard that there is or was is ever gonna bring me down. And at Hamilton, the cast surprised the standby ticket lottery line with a special performance with the show's creator, Lynn manuel Miranda. It's up to you. Have you seen the show before? No, I'm going to see it today. Oh, Some yeah. had been waiting years to win tickets. This is big. This is really big. Nice. Huge. <laughs> yes. Welcome back to Broadway. Yes. Back to Broadway. Although on this night, it felt like everyone had won the lottery. Hello, Glinda 
Alphabet. Alphabet. Before we opened the doors, we all had a chance to speak to the stars of the shows. Gina Claire Mason and Lindsay Pierce play Glinda and Elphaba, the witches of Wicked. You guys have waited 18 months. I'm not going to cry right now. For this moment, <laughs> for the moment that's happening right now. Is it sinking in? I think we're both feeling a lot of gratitude. Yeah. So <laughs> you're going to make me cry. I know. I'm like, <laughs> so, so good for the boys. <laughs> so good for the boys. Oh, so oh, tea okay. with lemon. Tea with lemon. I feel like running through the streets today, being like, Broadway's back! Did you know? So many shows are reopening today, and you can feel it outside. The pulse, the pulse, I can feel it. My people! And Craig and Al were also feeling the pulse on top of the Hamilton marquee, speaking to Hamilton himself and Eliza, played by Miguel Cervantes and Crystal Joy Brown. Do you feel the in a sense, responsibility almost, to bring some sense of normalcy to our lives. Tonight's not about Hamilton. It's about the city, it's about the country, it's about renewing our life and getting back to the new and moving forward. Crystal, what are you most excited about? So I'm excited to be with my cast and crew, and I'm also excited to look out into an audience full of people who are, are there to be inspired. No! And The Lion King has been inspiring for decades. Jenna and Carson spoke with two of its stars, Adrian Walker and Brandon McCall, right before Curtain. You feel like Akuna Matata has a whole new meaning in your life? Yeah, yeah. I think being away from the stage for so long, I learned a lot about myself. And so I do have less worries. Akuna Matata, that was my motto for the whole pandemic. Like, no worries, we'll get through this. Everyone being here tonight, Everyone stepping foot in that theater, it's just a sign of perseverance. We all made it through together. Even former stars of the shows came to show support, like the effervescent Kristen Chenoweth, who originated the role of Glinda. This is my daughter, Vale. This is Miss Chenoweth. Nice to meet you. Here we are, it's Broadway, it's opening night. Curtain's about to go up. I'm actually <laughs> nervous, it's like I'm back there. The audience has... We are so happy to have them, but if, if they could only feel what's going on with the people on stage, if they could only feel our hearts are beating so fast, this is the way to, to help our hearts. Arts has the power to change lives. You're part of healing tonight. You are. I'm so happy. <laughs> Who can say if I've been changed for the And then it was the magic moment to reopen the doors to Broadway. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Wicked. The theater is open. Welcome to Hamilton. Three, two, one. The audience is jumping out of their seats before the show's even started. Welcome back to the theater. As surprise guests greeted them. There's no place like home. And the first notes played. Each show seemed to sing the same refrain. Broadway is back. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> the Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. Chuck 
in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. What Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. This week we're having some fun with our series, TikTok Made Me Try It. And our next guest is a father of four whose kids told him, Dad, you're too old for TikTok. <laughs> well, apparently Dad knows best because Sal Farzian's account, Simply Sal Finds, has one million followers. He shows us which household items are really worth buying. He's got a few here for us today. Sal, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right, let's start in the kitchen. What do you got? Absolutely. So first off, these silicone containers are a real game changer in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Okay. They stand. Yeah. They open like and they that. zip shut. So right. no need for lids. That's really a, a huge benefit. Oh. And you're not wasting plastic doing exactly. individual Super bags. Are they hard to clean? They're not. You can rinse them, obviously, but you can also toss them into the dishwasher mm -hmm. for easy cleaning. I like that you oh, say you don't need lids because I lose lids like yeah. crazy. I do too. What about this? Yeah. So this clip-on strainer, this is actually one of my favorite accessories in the kitchen. And the best part is it's under $10. <gasps> it's super affordable and they easily clip on to pots for easy straining of pastas and other foods. And I you can also attach this. them to bowls for straining fruits and vegetables. Oh, nice. Yeah. This is so awesome. Yeah. And Another, then really quickly, what about the, ooh. I am obsessed with this portable blender. Yes. Uh, it's portable. Yeah, it's super portable. It's okay. rechargeable, which to me is a must have mm -hmm. for on to go families. Mm -hmm. um, if you are, you know, someone who just, you know, tends to work a lot, mm -hmm. or you're going to the beach, going on a picnic, you're going to the gym. So whip up a smoothie. You can make smoothies, protein shakes, oh. juices. It works. Yeah, it only yeah. takes a couple hours to charge up fully, but you can it can last all day. Does it work well though? It does. It does. So it works also well with um, strawberries, bananas, all kinds of fruits, and it also comes with this little ice tray. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can crush ice. Oh, and make fantastic! Your That's yeah. awesome. What about your spices? Spices. All right. One of the challenges that I have at my house, and I'm not sure if everyone else has it, but yes. we can't find our spices when we need them. A hundred percent. So this spice organizer may be a good solution for a lot of people because of the fact that it has a D-shaped design, which makes it super uh, convenient to fit in most cabinets. Oh my gosh, I love mm. this. It's got a dual kind of swivel action as well, so you can easily find the spices that you need, which mm -hmm. is really convenient. And another food for thought that you can also use this for, which I thought about coming into the studio today. Okay. You can also use it for perfume bottles. Oh, yeah. And medicine bottles. Wait, we have the QR oh, yeah. code. Do we miss that back? So yeah, people, can, people yeah. can scan yeah. it and that's get right. it in yeah. And if you alphabetize them, they're even you easier. You can. I do alphabetize, but too. people really? in my house do not, do not put, put them, them back, back in alphabetical yes. order. Not make oh, But enough nutmeg. about that. Sorry. Socks. That would be me. Oh, this is genius. <laughs> this is, yeah. Can I take this one? I'm just kidding. I'm taking it. We really love these dividers. So for us, I mean, what's really nice about it is they clip onto each other, so they make this honeycomb shape that they you can customize for any drawer, oh, which is awesome. The so kids socks buy these for whatever fits in your. Yeah, door. kids socks. Sorry. You can use them for ties and other types of garments as well. <laughs> this is such a great idea. Now, it's if, probably not too expensive either. If, if you could only find the missing socks, I know, that right? Would be spectacular. Know. Right, Ooh, what is this? I love these little gadgets. Okay, with fall coming up, which is my favorite time of the year, so with Halloween and, and Thanksgiving coming up, mug warmers are very essential for, especially for our house. Mm. I work from home, and so having my coffee hot for hours on out is really important for me. Mm -hmm. But not only can you keep your coffee warm, you can keep teas as well as soups. That's a really, oh, that's and then nice. what is this? It only heats up in a couple minutes. This is adorable. Ooh, little these mini waffle makers. Mini waffle makers, Oh, yeah. waffle makers. Yeah, you can make these cute, you know, pumpkin shape and skull shape waffles. Um, and you can really get really creative with the recipes as well. That's fantastic. Um, and they're compact and portable, so you can pretty much save them anywhere you want. Well, Sal, thank you so much. I Simply know. Sal, right. thank you. This is you. why you're popular, because you find things that sometimes we wouldn't find. Wow. Right. But they're actually and useful. And yeah. you yes. can find all these products on today.com slash shop. For more of Sal's favorite organization products, head to our TikTok page at shop today. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Nathan Lane, we are so excited to have you back Thank in you. studio. Thank you. What so are you I'm... most excited about being back at today? I'm 65. <laughs> I, I don't get excited about anything anymore. Although I am a little excited. I mean, I'm just a little excited about being on the Today Show again with Hoda and Jenna. <laughs> well, we're a lot of excited. Oh, are you? Yeah, we are. Oh, well. We're, we're so excited. Well, I don't know what we're going to do with all this excitement, but I can't wait. Okay, here's a question. How well do you really know your neighbors? Well, we are about to find that with Emmy and Tony winning actor Nathan Lane. So on Hulu's new series, it's called Only Murders in the Building, just renewed, by the way, for season two. Nathan stars alongside Steve Martin and Martin Short and Selena Gomez. They try to solve a mystery about an untimely death in their swanky apartment building. Okay, so Nathan plays a quirky neighbor who is actually <laughs> producing the trio's podcast. He's laughing already about their journey to unravel the mystery. Take a look. Two episodes of your podcast and my name is in Fallon's mouth. Wow. You've got more coming, right? Please tell me, you've got more coming of soon. Course, yes. uh, please tell yes, soon. Of course, Actually, we've yes, got a yes, setback. With lots of juicy twists and turns and room for at least four demon spots in every hour. At <laughs> least, sure. Uh, I got to tell you, I feel like a proud papa. My boys. <laughs> I want to be in that room. Nathan Lane, Martin Short, Steve Martin, uh, all together on that couch. Come on. What, what, what's that like for you? Well, <laughs> it's, uh, I've known them for a long time. Yeah. So it's like old home week. And they're, you know, they, they're, they're bona fide comic geniuses. And they've got nothing to prove. They just want to, yeah. they want to show up, have fun, do good work, and make millions of dollars. <laughs> and, and that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, no, they're they're such you know it, uh, you know they really set the tone. Yeah. And and uh, so they're so kind and gracious and so appreciative of all the the guest stars mm -hmm. who've been on. But you're a legend too. Yeah. You know I, that, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, I've heard. I've heard I'm a legend. <laughs> And then to add Selena. You reach a certain age, and then, yes, you become a legend. Well, not everybody. Not everybody. Only that's certain true. people. That's true. It's true, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and to throw Selena Gomez. Yeah. Cold shoulders really do work for you. They See? do? You know who cold shoulders don't work for? Who? Me. But wait, cold shoulders. I shoulder. can't wear the cold shoulders. They're, they're not shoulder out. You said they work on anybody, they and I was a little skeptical of that remark. But they certainly are working for you. I, am I allowed to say that, yes, or, yes, or am I going to be this, arrested? Is this the first time you because have met? Because I pointed out your cold shoulders. Is this the first shoulders. time you have met? You've met Jenna. I thought I've met you before, but I think I just know you from theater. Yeah. yeah. Well, sure. That's we. You do. You feel you know yes. someone when yeah. you've seen them uh, perform. I've seen you perform. You didn't feel me in the theater, though. You didn't feel uh, my Well, presence. no, I can't do that either. I can't feel you <laughs> in the theater, ladies and gentlemen. What is she talking what about? Is she talking I don't about? know. I don't get out much anymore. More. Nathan, well, <laughs> last night, by the way, was a big night on yes, Broadway. I, I mean, heard. Two big shows, turn the lights on, the, yeah. the theaters were packed. I mean, you you are Broadway, basically. So when you saw it kind of come back, the lights come back on, 
What, what did it feel like for you? Well, I, I'm uh, cautiously optimistic, yeah. as yes. they say. I mean, it's 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 really important. It's yeah. such, a, such an important part of the culture and the economy of New York, and um, so it's exciting to see it slowly coming back to life. And and uh, I, I hope I hope you know uh, that it all works out. And yeah. uh, because there are all these new, the new variant, there's Delta yeah. and there's yeah. the Mu, the Mu variant. Moo. The Mu is very upsetting because not only are there respiratory problems, you also start lactating. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I said lactating at, at this time of the morning. So I'm worried about everything, but I, I have my fingers crossed for, for all of them. And, okay. and, and there's a would lot you, of exciting new plays coming Would you coming go back too. on Broadway if you got asked today? No. no. You wouldn't? No. no? Why? We want I'm you kidding. To. I'm kidding. Of course, if somebody came up with, a, you know, a, a great play or yeah, you know something, I'm sure. I uh, I just did a reading of a new Sondheim musical. Oh wow! He's 90. 90. And, this is a new and there's a new. He's written this this new musical. Are yeah. you going to be in it? I I don't know. I don't know if, uh, if they want me. But uh, yeah. But it was very exciting. Bernadette Peters and oh, I. A whole oh. group of wonderful people. Oh, oh that's going to be good. That, I that like got I know Bernadette too. She could wear cold shoulders. She definitely. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. All she right. still got that cold shoulder look. We want to play for a game. Sure. Will you play a game with us? Again? I would love okay, to play we got a game. A steering wheel it's and what I live for. This is a game yes. we're calling Life, oh, oh, Life in the mm -hmm. Fast Lane. So we're going to mention one of your memorable roles. <laughs> okay. And we want you to tell a story about it, okay? Okay. Engines going? Okay, start your engine. You okay. ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay, the first one, Nathan. You yeah. ready? Okay, let's show us The Lion, the Lion King. King. Oh, The yeah. Lion King. Yeah. Yes. You want me to tell a story? There it is, yes. Oh, yes. Well, we used to record very early in the morning, and uh, I was a little cranky before my coffee early in the morning, and Ernie Sabella, the great Ernie Sabella who plays Pumba, used to make um, uh, flatulent noises <laughs> to make me let him do a line, and he would go... <laughs> like that and they eventually put that in the movie they did. yeah that's when i was a young warthog <laughs> there you go you got it girl yeah you got, you got it. it all right okay the bird cage yeah the take bird us to cage that. come on so i was uh, what a great experience the great robin williams everybody the great yeah. mike nichols elaine may but uh uh one day uh uh clint eastwood showed up on the set to, to get a haircut. He was going to an event and the woman who did hair used to do hair on his movies and uh, apparently even superstars can't resist a free haircut. <laughs> so Clint shows up and, and Robin says, come on, let's go see him. I want to, uh, you know, I want to go look at him. And he, so he said, so I said, I don't want to, I'm dressed like Barbara Bush. I said, I don't want, this is not the time hey, hey, hey. To, meet, to meet Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Barbara Bush, you, you know, know, that's her Yeah, grandmother. you know, Barbara Bush is my grandmother. Oh, God bless her. So, but I'm, yeah, I was, but I'm dressed like Barbara Bush. And so they, Clint Eastwood comes out and we're talking and, and he's very gracious. And, and then at the end, I said to him, and by the way, Mr. Eastwood, if you're ever doing another Western, I'd like to be considered. And he looked at me in the Barbara Bush get up and he said, yeah, maybe for the school marm. Oh. 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 Where did you wear cold shoulders as Barbara Bush or no? That was no, 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 not for Barbara Bush. No cold shoulders for Barbara. I love that Barbara's name has been, <laughs> Mrs. Bush has been in it a hundred times. Only murders in the building streaming. Oh, that's it? Only that my it. entire career in two parts? No, I know. We could have more. <laughs> okay, just, I'm just, kidding. You've got a second season yes. coming up. We're happy to see you. I mean, it's already yes. renewed and you, you know, just started. Yeah. I know. Well, it's that's very okay. exciting. All it's right. been wonderful. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you're a Thank blast. you. You guys come back tomorrow. We're going to have another great morning. Ken Burns will be here with his latest project and a look at the life of a three-time heavyweight boxing champ, Muhammad Ali. Yeah, and then the legendary boxer's daughter will be with him as well. We're looking forward to a really good conversation. Have a great day. You still look fabulous. <laughs> and we'll see you tomorrow.
Thanks for joining me at Today All Day. I love sharing cooking with Cal videos with you, but I've also gotten the chance to interview so many fantastic people across our country wanting to make a difference in one person's life or change the world for the better. Here are a few of my favorites. Enjoy. Once I felt what it felt like to breathe for the first time and get that full breath of air, I think it unlocked something where I just wanted to keep exploring. For Kaylee Dunnewald, lifelong health issues led her on a mission. Take me back to why you ever started exploring plant-based diets. Growing up, I suffered really severe cases of both asthma and allergies, and saw all these doctors and specialists, and every one of them told me this is just the way I was born. But then when I was 25 years old, I was living in Bali, Indonesia, and embarked on a plant-based diet. Kaylee says within two weeks, her symptoms disappeared. I really felt like it was my mission in life to share this really powerful story with more people to let them know that you really have more agency around your health than you might realize. She embarked on a career change, first becoming a health coach and inspiring others to view food as medicine. It was very, very powerful work, but once I kind of a year and a half in, I ultimately felt like I needed to make a bigger impact. And so if I could really target the root cause of at least what a lot of these people are suffering from, it's just the food being offered to consumers. And she did, targeting a rather unexpected food. How did you decide ice cream was this niche area that you wanted to focus on? I thought that that would be a really powerful place to start because proving that you can do that in a nutrient dense way really shows that you can do it pretty much anywhere. In 2017, Kaylee launched Sacred Surf, a plant-based gelato made with young coconut meat and packed with superfoods and nutrition. In a thing of ice cream, we've got activated charcoal, tiger nut flour, and mucuna purines. It, it sounds healthy, but I don't know what they are. <laughs> so we really tried to recreate this nostalgic cookies and cream, but really only working with nutrient dense ingredients. So our hero in that flavor is tiger nut flour, which tiger nuts are actually not a nut at all. They're this root vegetable and they're packed with resistant starch. So really good for your digestive health. I like to cook and there are certain healthy ingredients that are just really hard to make work. What was the trial and error process like? What makes ice cream really rich and creamy is a lot of fat, a lot of sugar, and gums and stabilizers. And we don't use any of that. This young Thai coconut meat, it's a pulp material. So it's got a lot of extra fiber and that's what lends itself to the really rich and creamy texture. Two years later, Whole Foods started stocking Sacred Serve. What was that moment like? Very surreal. I wanted the product to work. I wanted people to love it. And we were really, really well received. But the cherry on top? Kaylee not only figured out a way to make ice cream relatively healthy for customers, but for the environment too. I think one of the coolest things is, is the actual packaging. I had no idea that the regular carton that you get regular ice cream in is not actually biodegradable, is not recyclable. How is this, this carton different? What people don't recognize is because it looks like paper, there's actually a thin plastic lining on the inside that acts as a moisture barrier that essentially renders it trash. And so what we've done is we've replaced that plastic moisture barrier with a water-based barrier. So there's no plastic at all in our container, which makes it fully recyclable, compostable, and biodegradable right at home. Cookies and cream. As for the taste test, Mama. <laughs> looks like a thumbs up. Mama. <laughs> What's Bosco doing in the middle of that? Bosco wanted some too. Hey, it's healthy for everyone. Um, so I asked Kaylee what other flavors uh, she would like to make next, and she said there's been overwhelming requests for a berry flavor and a coffee one. Mm. Um, and after that, she might tackle some more items in the frozen food aisle. So we've kind of gotten on this kick at our house where, you know, if you finish your dinner, you have dessert. Yeah. And Calvin loves ice cream. He is obsessed with this ice cream, and I have no guilt giving it to him. Yeah. So, like, it's full of these antioxidants and healthy sure. ingredients. It's, it's not full of fat and sugar. And Ollie gets in on it, too. How about it? And okay. Bosco, too, it looked there like. You go. <laughs> Bosco's like, don't forget about me. It is time now for Cooking with Cal. It's a real easy one this week. My little chef and I made one of my mom's signature picnic side dishes with a colorful twist. Take a look. It's another edition of Cooking with Cal. What are we making today? Um, pasta salad. Pasta salad? I love this recipe. It's something my mom always whipped up. We always had it at summer barbecues. It's so, so easy. Uh, 
the hardest part is waiting for the water to boil. We want to make our water that's boiling taste like the sea. We want to make it taste like salt water, okay? So I'm going to add a bunch of salt. Salt! To our boiling water. Okay. All right, so let's get the ingredients ready while we're waiting. You know how this thing works? So we're going to use a can of tomatoes. But these are cooked tomatoes. They're not raw tomatoes. So you'll like these because they're cooked tomatoes, okay? Now turn that as hard as you can. Use those muscles. Do you want some help? There we go. Do you know what these are? What? Olives. Black olives. On taste one, you haven't tried one in a long time. Ollie loves them. Ollie loves olives. A little bit. I love them. I could eat them like this. So we got our tomatoes, our olives. You know what this is? What? Got some parsley. All right, you want to chop this for me? Why don't you put your hand like that? There we go. Good job. Now I'm just gonna make these all a little smaller, okay? This adds a nice pop of green and a nice freshness to the whole dish. So a lot of times my mom would use elbow noodles, the ones that look like C's or U's as you call them. I felt like using tricolor pasta. You know why they call it tricolor pasta? Why? because there's three colors. So this one is just made with wheat. This one has tomato in it. <gasps> and what do you think's in this one if it's green? Broccoli. Close. What else is green? What's green and leafy? Celery. Well, celery has some leaves. What looks like lettuce? Spinach. Yay, cool. I'm gonna dump this in, okay? Oh, okay. Well, that's boiling. Can you dump a can of tomatoes in here? Now all of the olives, the parsley. Ah, good call, buddy. Good idea. Now we wait. Can you taste that? Mm. Mm. Perfect. All right, draining the noodle. All right, I wanna pour these into this bowl. You dump a whole bunch of olive oil in here. All of it? Not all of it, I'll tell you what. All around, swirl it all around. A little salt. This will come out fast, so let's not. Let's give it a big stir. Before we put this in the fridge to let it cool down, let's taste it, okay? Mm -hmm. You like it? Tastes even better when it's cold. All right, for these recipes and more, head to today.com slash food. Bye-bye. <laughs> and he was out. The best part about this recipe, it's a nice base. Yeah. You know, so if you like to add a little tanginess to it, you mm -hmm. can spice it up, you know, with some Italian dressing, or you mm -hmm. can add some meat or cheese, whatever, whatever you want. This is like a good, simple What's pasta great salad. about this also is you can take it to a, a picnic or barbecue, and it's not mayonnaise-based, yeah. exactly. so you don't have to worry about I think that's about... why my mom did it, because yeah. she just yeah. leave it out and not have to Yeah, because my mom would literally, see if, if it was like 20 minutes and it had been a minute, she'd just literally slap it out of your hand. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, put that down. That's yeah. it. Oh, that's a good one. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are. <laughs> <laughs> the Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts.
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. He was a character. Like, he would do anything to make anybody laugh. He wanted to do whatever he could to make someone stay better. Besides his wife Erica and his three kids, there were few things Jason Pompey loved more than biking. Good luck, babe. That was his release. He would just get on his bike and just ride. Jason started cycling in 2016, just before he and Erica, two old middle school classmates, reconnected. Soon after, she was riding too, but just months into dating, Jason was diagnosed with bladder cancer. We were in and out of the hospital a lot. And there were times he was scared that he wasn't able to ride again. Jason underwent two surgeries and life seemed to be back on track. By the spring of 2019, he was back on his bike. They said all the margins were clear and he was, he was good to go. That same year, Jason married Erica. He also learned about the Empire State Ride, a bike ride across New York State benefiting Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center in Buffalo. Wanting to give back, he marked it on his calendar for July 2020. He actually bought a brand new bike specifically for the Empire State Ride, a brand new helmet. He was, he, that was his goal. But last spring, Jason's cancer returned, this time to his lungs, stage four. Unable to ride during chemotherapy, he taped a message of support instead. This inspires me, this motivates me uh, with my treatments when I'm not feeling well and, and things like that. So I just want to say good luck and thank you to everybody who is participating in the challenge. Tragically, in January, Jason passed away. He's an amazing man. He's an absolutely amazing man. I wish I had so much more time with him. But amid her grief, Erica decided she had to fill his shoes. Turns out when the annual Empire State Ride happens next week, Jason will ride after all with Erica pedaling. So I've got his seat, the bike he purchased for me and his Garmin, all on my bike, ready to go. And I am gonna be wearing his wedding band around my neck and I am taking some of his ashes with me too. So I said, no matter if you're not here physically, Jason, you're going on this ride with me no matter what. <laughs> Erica wasn't as intense a rider as Jason, but between shifts as an OR nurse, she's been training hard. I knew I needed to do this for him because he didn't have a choice. He chose to fight every day. And I knew I could fight and push through the 560 miles in a week for him and for all the others that are fighting daily. Finding that extra gear to help Jason ride one last time. He would want people to know that you need to chase your dreams. Don't make excuses. I'm sure I'm going to have him there with me for the hills and at the finish line. I know he's going to be with me no matter what, every step of the way, because I know, I know he's proud of me for pushing myself, because this is nothing, nothing I would ever dreamed I could do. Welcome to Today All Day. All day? Today All Day. All day. This is a long oh, way of asking, man, yeah. who's your favorite okay. character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice yeah. things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. Oh, oh. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. 
We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you what you must know. The biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. It is time for another edition of Cooking with Cal, and this time my little chef and I are making my grandmother's tried and true potato salad. Hot <laughs> It's another edition of Cooking with Cal. What are we making today? Potato salad. Potato salad. So this potato salad was my grandmother's potato salad recipe. It's very, very basic. There's nothing fancy in it. It's literally just potatoes, eggs, scallions, some celery, and some mayonnaise. But we top it off with this. Do you know what this is? What? This is called paprika. Everybody has their own technique for hard boiling eggs. Here's how we do it. So let's gently put these in the pot. Five. Let's hard boil five eggs, okay? We've got the eggs in the pot. We're gonna fill this up with water, okay? Hello. We're gonna put them on the stove, bring it to a boil, and as soon as it boils, we're gonna cover it and then turn off the heat and let it sit for 20 minutes. Okay, so while the eggs are cooking, let's cut up our potatoes. All right, let's throw these in the pot. Add some cold water and then some salt. Okay, we're gonna turn this off. We're gonna cover it and we're gonna wait 20 minutes. <laughs> That's the worst thing you heard all day, huh? While we're waiting for the eggs and potatoes, I'm gonna chop some scallions. Thank you. Want me to chop and you eat your apple? Apple. These mm. add a nice little crunch to the potato salad. All right, it's been 20 minutes. Should we get the eggs? All right, we'll rinse them under some cold water. You want me? from our potato salad. Potatoes. All right, these are piping hot, okay? Can I cut them? Because potatoes are dry and don't have a lot of flavor, we're gonna add a lot of salt, a lot of pepper, and we're gonna add a lot of mayonnaise. Now this is controversial, because some people don't think you should add cold mayonnaise to a hot dish. But I find that the warm potatoes absorb all of the yummy mayonnaise as opposed to getting all dried out. So I'm not going to wait for them to cool. I'm just going to add it all now while it's still warm. And then I'm gonna put it all in the fridge. One, two, 
three. Two. And this is the sprinkle that my mom always used to do. Uh, boom! I put it in my mouth. <laughs> you love it? For these recipes and more, head to today.com slash bye-bye. So <laughs> he had to run off after eating the hot mayo. Yeah. <laughs> he always does. So you don't like hot mayo, you don't like celery, so this is not the recipe for you. No. And you like a mustardy like based mustard -based. potato salad. Well, yours look great, Dylan. Look, it's, you look it's great. Fantastic. Yeah, look, I awesome. don't like relish or mustard. I like a very basic potato salad. So it's old fashioned and it's I like cow, so whatever yeah, you yeah. Cow's the man. Yeah. Yeah. Cow likes it, so win yeah. for me. We're back with our series, The Upside, and one man pushing himself to new heights, literally, against incredible odds. It's a remarkable story. Two years ago, John Hoffman was in grave condition, not expected to live much longer without a lung transplant. Well, today he is enjoying his second chance at life and teaming up with the doctor who gave it to him. Made it. The summit of Half Dome. When 39-year-old father of two, John Hoffman, stood atop Yosemite National Park's famed Half Dome this April, the journey was much more than a climb. It's been, I would say, a, a long, steep, tough road. John was born with cystic fibrosis, a progressive genetic disease that causes frequent lung infections and breathing difficulties. He grew up loving the outdoors, but as time went on, they became much harder to enjoy. I was always pretty tired. It was a lot of coughing. I would avoid stairs. Going across the house would wind me. If I needed to leave the house, I was always, you know, trying to bring oxygen with me. It got pretty bad. Bad enough that by fall of 2019, he desperately needed a double lung transplant. Dr. Chad Denlinger was John's surgeon. What would his prognosis have been if he didn't get this transplant? John's lung function was about 20% normal. He was on continuous oxygen, and he was just fighting infection after infection after infection. With his expected survival might be a year or two. Wow. In October that year, John finally got a new set of lungs at the Medical University of South Carolina, remarkably after waiting only two weeks. He pushed his recovery just as fast. I saw progress, you know, every day, every week, every month and um, just, just continued it. You know, I didn't let it plateau. Now that you have two new lungs in your body, how are you feeling? I feel great. Um, this time last week, I was hiking in the Tetons, just doing all the things that I missed out on the last few years. Mm -hmm. I mean, most people, you think you get two new lungs, you, you start with a little jog around the corner. <laughs> Which brings us back to the top of Half Dome. A year and a half after lung transplant, I freaking made it. Down at the bottom, his wife snapped a picture. That tiny dot with arms raised is John. She sent it to Dr. Denlinger, who, like John, is an outdoor enthusiast. When he saw it, he ordered up a unique prescription. Clearly, John is an outdoors type of person. He's in great shape. So I thought it would be a, a tremendous amount of fun and a great honor to have John join us uh, for the race this weekend. That race is the AR Georgia Hogback, a 24-hour adventure race where teams navigate the wilderness by bike, boat, and on foot. And Dr. Denlinger wanted a teammate with a good set of lungs. So I'd imagine that's a, a good sign when your doctor thinks you're good enough shape to be able to do something like this. Absolutely. I was, I was completely thrown back if this is going to be a push, and I'm, I was very excited about it, and I'm excited and nervous about it now. If you are nervous, I guess the best teammate to have is your doctor. <laughs> Absolutely. Doctor, what does it mean for you to have John on your team? I mean, this this must be just an incredible full circle moment. No, you're absolutely right. This this is a uh, chance of a lifetime. What does it mean for your boys now to, to have their dad back, back and see him participating in, in something like this? They must just feel like you are Superman. Yeah, they, I mean, they really do love it. it it's a it's a very humbling experience. And um, to see them get excited for things that I do, it means a whole lot to me. Love every bit of it, absolutely. Aww. 
Yeah. So I asked the doctor, I was a little concerned. I'm like, can you overuse new transplanted yeah. lungs? And the doctor said um, that he is not worried that he is pushing John too hard. In fact, this is actually going to make his lungs even stronger and better. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Okay, it is time for Overheard on 3rd on the Plaza. Dylan has been juggling a lot lately, including her newest children's book. I just told her during the commercial break, I'm like, it's real. I know, it's really happening. Because we've talking about this for a long time. <laughs> so in Parents Magazine, she's talking about Misty the Cloud and how it has been really years in the making. Yeah, no, it's something Brian and I came up with, you know, well before we ever thought about having kids. Um, so we talk about that in the article, where the idea came from. I also uh, talk about some of my favorite books that I like reading to the boys and what I liked reading growing up and there's one story I tell um, it's funny because I will read a book and I read it you know word for word as is when my father-in-law reads the book to the kids yeah he he makes all the characters family members oh, so then yeah. when I go back to read the book later Calvin's like no 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 that's you that's Ollie <laughs> that's, that's pa cute. so it makes it very confusing uh, when, when it comes to telling the story but it's it's a nice little article and the book comes out September 28th well congratulations Missy the Cloud seriously there was a day when I first met Dylan like soon after she was talking about this idea for a children's book and so yeah. now almost seven, eight years later. I said, here's a rough draft. Can yeah. you watch your kids? Oh my gosh. Like and it? now so, it'll yeah. be in bookstores. Which I know, amazing. which I'm so excited. Okay. So you can pick up on um, that Parents Magazine on stands now, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, we wanted to do something different, a little bit uh, unusual. We've got a Jenga set out here, and um, some of these have actual questions from you folks. From you here guys. Plaza. So they pulled you. I don't know why you, you didn't just ask us in person, but <laughs> yeah. we put them in a Jenga box. Okay, so here we go. You go first. Me go first? Yeah. What? Actually, so what have happens Jenga, if it right? falls? Which it could fall. Okay. It's like humid out here. You can't play Jenga when it's humid. I'm gonna take right. the top one. Okay, what's your go-to karaoke song? Good question. Mine is We Didn't Start the Fire by um, Billy Joel. Mine Do you even is, know that song? We Didn't Start okay, the Fire. Good. Yeah. Mine is Honey, I'm Home by Shania oh. Twain. Don't yeah, get me I started. I don't know, for some reason, I all day. <laughs> I can do that one. All right, here's another one. This one says, if you could cameo in a TV show, Ooh. what would it be and why? A current or past Whatever TV you show. want. Mine, obviously, would be Seinfeld. Just because okay. I feel like Seinfeld. my life revolves around oh Seinfeld. Oh, my gosh. You know what show I wanted to be on so badly? I'm, you guys probably won't know the show. It was called Kids Incorporated. <gasps> I remember you Kids remember? Incorporated. Did you just hit me? No, I'm just kidding. I love Kids that show. Yes. I would watch hey. it. I D yes. S O. It's like I made it to kids. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Oh, you know Kids Incorporated. Of course That's I know friends. Kids Incorporated. Okay. Okay. Um, what shows are you currently binging? I actually just wrapped up Black Monday on Ooh. Showtime. We've had, you know, a lot of the cast on the show um, over the years. Andrew Rannells um, is oh, on the yeah. show. Such a good show. I mean, dark and, and crass, yeah. but I mean. And to continue totally the it. dark theme, Pass the Baton, Dr. Death on Peacock. Oh, so good. So just good. them on the show. I know. So good with Christian Slater. Yes. Josh, anyway, okay. Are we out of time? Oh, do we have time for one more? We have time for one more. Okay, one go more. ahead. No, it's your turn. Is it my turn? I'm going to go for... It's hard, because they're like, it's yeah. humid out there. Nice. Okay, the question is, what did you want to be when you, quote unquote, grew up? Hmm. 
It's your question. This. Really? Fifth grade career day. I have a sheet of yellow construction paper, helmet hair, oh. hoop earrings, and I have little squiggly Fifth lines. Grade? Fifth grade. Thank you, Mrs. James. <laughs> I remember preschool, we did, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you had to dress up like it. So I brought a curling iron in with me because I really wanted to, you know, be a hairstylist. Oh, there you go. So, well, you and, still have some kind of curls. Yeah, but I didn't do them. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hey, today all day, we've got a great show for you on this Wednesday morning, including the details on the reopening of Broadway last night. But let's kick it off with the big news at The Voice. This Monday's premiere episode will mark 10 years of The Voice, and Carson sat down with his pals Blake, Kelly, John, and new coach Ariana Grande to hear all about the new season. Check it out. We have some big news at The Voice this season. The show is hitting a major milestone. Kicks off on Monday. You got a brand new coach. But not a brand new host. Carson uh -uh. Daly still doing it. Seven That's right. Pals. Monday's premiere, guys, is going to mark season, count them, 21. Jeez. A remarkable 10 years of The Voice. Coaches Blake Shelton, Kelly Clarkson, and John Legend return. And also joining us now, pop star Ariana Grande for a new round of Fierce competition. I know I'm new here. Is everybody in here just obsessed with Ariana? Ari, 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 Ari. Ari, you are so successful, so busy, now so married. How did you find time for us? <laughs> what? Oh my God. So married. You are so many things. I, don't, I was just so honored to be invited to be a part. I love the show. I love everybody here. And I love the contestants. And it's just been such an amazing opportunity. So I'm so grateful to be a part of it. We've done some shooting and I've noticed how emotional you've got. Yes. Did you think this job was gonna get you that emotional, that you'd be this connected to your artists? I mean, I'm very well aware of how I can get. I'm very quick to, you know, form certain relationships with people and care very quickly. So yeah. I was expecting it to be somewhat difficult, but not as difficult as it actually has been. It's, it's pretty tough, but everyone's amazing and, um, yeah, it's been beautiful to meet so many amazing artists. Now, true or false, you had never met Blake Shelton before this show. I had met Blake. <laughs> Are we hugging? I'm still recovering. <laughs> <laughs> what did you, what was your opinion of Blake before working with him on The Voice, and what is it now? I thought he was lovely, and I still think he's just as, as lovely. Uh, sort I of, love it. you guys sit next to each other, yes, and as we're doing the show, I'll see you every now and again sort of cheersing each other. Oh, that's and, when they're making what, fun of our me. Bond, our our bond has been. That we both make fun of Kelly. You, know? <laughs> Kelly, you are in your eighth season. You are, and, and John, you've done six. What do you think Ariana brings as a coach to the voice? Uh, well, the obvious is her voice. But now, there's no to hide. She's got this incredible talent with her, not just her tone, but her range. Um, and then also, like, experience. She's been doing it forever since she was a kid. Like, that's, that's an amazing amount of experience to be able to bestow upon your um, your artist that you're working with. I um, love you so much. No, but she's so kind. Of, and I'm going to be real with y'all. She's funny on camera, but like a hundred times funnier behind True. the scenes. She's it's very like, funny. Yeah, None of my jokes can make it to air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's worth our it to make that laugh. Working right. over time. It's your untucked. It's like, it's like, <laughs> our budget doubled because of the bleep we had to buy. <laughs> Just, you know. I'll pay for it. It'll, it'll come out of Blake's pocket. It'll come out of Blake's John, talk, talk about Ariana and what sort of addition she's been to the Let's show. Let's talk about her like she's not here. I'm a huge fan of Ariana. My whole family are right, huge right. fans. <laughs> I can sing along to pretty much any song of hers. I'm a super fan. So having her here on the show, knowing what kind of audience she brings to the show, knowing how much people love her out in the world, it's going to be so great for The Voice. We're entering rarefied TV air. Episode 500 is going to happen during season 21. That puts us with the greats like Law and & Order. Wow. And you've been here all 500 episodes. When you look back at the show, how do you think we've gotten better through the years? Well, first of all, when you look at pictures of me and you, we haven't gotten better. <laughs> that is mean, a fact. Remember Father yes. Time yes. is so, undefeated. There's been some real changes, but at, at the end of the day, I think people still keep coming back because it's artists working with artists and, and there's, you know, we're not judging people. We're just trying to help them be the best they can be. The best part is we shot that, which you'll see next week. We had our audience back. 
Yeah. You know, so we're kind of coming out of that pandemic shooting. But I'll tell you about, about Ariana. She was such a huge fan of the show before she became a coach. Mm -hmm. That really helped because she knows the show really well. Uh, she knows that Blake and Kelly, how they work. And uh, our talent's great this year. So we're super psyched to I have I love Ariana. looking at you and Blake's baby picture. Oh, my yeah. God. Years ago. Wow. <laughs> it's like when you so, see the president so two years young. later. Things have changed. Uh, Job ages. It's 10 yeah. years. Still quite Come handsome. Come on. So, yeah. Yeah. Quite handsome. Well, what a blessing to do. The show's just such a, been such a great thing for all of us. And there's so much great talent. We're excited for you to see the new season. Yeah, it's back. It's back. We're all going to be watching when The Voice premieres next Monday, Tuesday night, only on NBC. Congratulations. Something for the whole family to get together and watch. It That's is. Nice. Yeah. It is. That's Not a lot nice. of that these days. Yeah. Coming up next on Today Talks, Dylan shares her love of golf with other moms-to-be. Stay with us. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcast. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back. Today on the third hour, Dylan spotlights a Minnesota company helping moms to be hit the golf course in style. It is time now for our series, Sisterhood, and I'm so excited about this one. So you guys know that I love to play golf, yes. but playing when you're pregnant can be tough for so many reasons, including just finding something to wear. But I recently stumbled on one company founded by two sisters in Minnesota, helping moms to be take the course in style. It was only in the last year that clothing for pregnant women and the standards around how women, athletes having babies are all changing. Sisters Anna Sabastin and Kristen Horvath are mothers and golfers, just like me. You can get workout clothes, you can get stretchy pants and you know, a, a sports bra or whatnot. But I mean, golf, you have to wear certain clothes and it literally does not exist. They set out to solve a problem that a lot of us face on the course. Why do you think there weren't maternity clothes for, for pregnant golfers? There's a belief, or there was a belief, that you know you shouldn't really stay active when you're pregnant, and I think that has been debunked. It all started in 2012 when Anna was on a baby moon trip out in California. I wore a pair of like one size too big golf shorts, and I left them unbuttoned at the top. And then I did find a golf shirt, a polo. So everything did not look super flattering. No, it's not flattering. <laughs> the colors did not match. Every time I hit a swing, you know, you had to redo your outfit. By Anna's second pregnancy, nearly three years later, she was still teed off and decided to take a swing at designing her own pieces straight from her kitchen table. There's a whole ecosystem in Minneapolis. So we were able to find advisors, manufacturers, pattern makers, all in our local community. You're often home a lot at night. The kids go to bed early and, you know, it's different than when we had time to go out and socialize a lot in the evening. And so we just kind of rededicated a lot of that time towards putting it towards the business. Playing Nine officially launched in November 2016 with a polo shirt and a squirt. Women go through pregnancy in different ways. How do you test it? What models do you use? 
That's a really good question. Design changed because of that very reason. So for example, we only have a pocket on the back of the sport. Most of my normal golf sports have two pockets on the side, but we found that as the body expanded in different ways, you could get some sort of funny bulges. The line has since expanded to include a sleeveless top and a tennis dress. Maybe white is a color that you wouldn't normally choose to wear when you're pregnant. It's not the most slimming color, but a lot of tennis clubs have a mandatory white uh, requirement. But funny enough, white is the biggest seller. And the feedback they're getting? Well, let's just say it's above par. A lot of people are reaching out just so, so happy to have something so that they continue to be able to stay active. I will say in, in the tournament I played in, my, my final putt on 18. It was, was amazing. Was, you saw it? Oh, yes, we saw it. It really makes a difference to, to go out there and feel like you look good. And I mean, yeah. you guys play such a big role in that. If, you know, you Dylan have ideas of other sports you've been struggling to find clothes for, or if anyone watching today does, um, reach out. We we are eager to keep filling those needs and make sure that expected moms have great clothes to wear. Oh, that's so nice. And you want to feel good and look good on the golf yeah. course. When I played in that American Century uh, Championship golf tournament uh, in Lake Tahoe, playing nine provided the clothes for me because there are no other clothes. <laughs> and I absolutely loved wearing them. And it turns out I actually played some of my best rounds of golf six months pregnant. Wow. So there's a selection of the outfits I wore. And it's, it's if, awesome. if you look good, you play good. It's a mental absolutely. game. So You know what? I'm you so don't know what somebody else is going through until you're in your shoes, right? And so when they said, of course we saw you because they understand, right? And there's right. a whole sisterhood. Oh, I did not even do that on purpose. <laughs> there's a whole sisterhood that I recognize even yeah. with the spot that I, that I learned. They get so. it. And the clothes are so comfortable that I even wear them just, just because. Around. There you go. I still wear my maternity <laughs> yoga pants, please. Uh, <laughs> I'm wearing my maternity pants. <laughs> yeah. Last night's Broadway is back. Yeah. Lights back on. Some mm -hmm. of the biggest shows returning last night. Craig and I, really fortunate. We were there for the return of Hamilton. Oh. Uh, some of the audience was literally waiting for years to see the show. Uh, and we got to catch up with uh, Miguel Cervantes. I actually saw him play Hamilton in Chicago. Right. And Crystal Joy Brown, who plays Eliza. Do you feel the, in a sense, responsibility almost to bring some sense of normalcy to our lives? Tonight's not about Hamilton. It's about the city. It's about the country. It's about renewing our life and getting back to the new and moving forward. Crystal, what are you most excited about? So I'm excited to be with my cast and crew, and I'm also excited to look out into an audience full of people who are, are there to be inspired. She was inspiring last yeah, night. Yeah, very much so. They, the whole cast. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. And we got to, they, <laughs> the, at the Richard Rogers Theater, there's a balcony on on the actual marquee. There it is, yeah. Oh, and, that's, oh that's where fun. you were. Roker screamed my people, and <laughs> his people screamed back. That's right. Yes, I love that. And Craig bought, bought the Dell and How did they like it? Oh, my what God. What did they think? The kids, they were, they were talking about it on the way to school this morning. They loved uh, it. Aww. Dell sang from, from beginning to end. Did Sydney stay up the whole time? They both. I was surprised, too. Wow. They stayed awake the whole time, fully and engaged. I was that's very awesome. proud to have given them some peanut M&Ms. Yes. Like to jack them up a little. <laughs> they were so excited. <laughs> oh, Mr. Roker. And he I gives like Candy. Thank you for that. We should Candy say Candy. Wicked and Lion King reopened too. Um, it was interesting when Savannah and Hoda were, were interviewing uh, some of the cast um, from Wicked. They got a little teary mm -hmm. and it just kind of put it in perspective for me. As exciting as it is for the audience and, yep. and the people who are able to come from all over the country, these actors and actresses have been through so much. A lot of them haven't worked. Yeah. So. And not just the actors and actresses. The, the crew. crew 100%. Yeah, this the, is their the craft. The folks who give this, out yes, the, pay, the yes. playbills. Yes. The people who work the concessions. I mean, it's such a, a ripple. The so restaurants all around Broadway. The whole thing. So we are happy that it is back. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, we were up pretty late last night, but for a very good reason. Broadway is back, baby, and we got to help reopen a couple of beloved shows. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Dan Hoda and Jenna, our epic nights in the lights of Broadway. Plus, Donna teaches us a new TikTok challenge. What could go wrong? Take a look. So we're, 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 we're cinching up because we, we know it's our outfit reveal time. So okay. it's our Tuesday, Tuesday reveal. S so in case you missed it, here are our outfit choices to vote from, okay? Here's Hoda's. 25,000 people were deciding what we should wear. So my three were the ABC, and then there's, there's <laughs> my Jenna's ABC. ABC. Okay, so... Who won? Okay. Let's find out. Should we do it? Okay. Let's see. Ready? One, One two, two, three. Ta-da! Meow. Meow. Uh, By the way, this looks really good on you. Well, I feel a little hypocritical. Why? Because at one point I said it was time for you to get rid of all your cold shoulder dresses. But that looks so good on you. This is sort of an old number that I brought out um, to go to a, a girl date with Mila this summer. And so I thought... By the way, that looks super cute on you. Oh, thank Why you. Why do cold shoulders... I think cold shoulders are one of the few things that look good on everybody. Like anybody but can wear But aren't they those. over? Uh, why? Who says when they... I think they are. I think they're I, over, but, they do, but, but you I know think what? it looks super cute on and, you. And you know what? I think animal print is sort of a, a neutral. It is? It's well, only cat print, because you know how I feel about cats. <laughs> yes, I do. I, I do. But thanks, you guys, for voting, and um, we're happy to wear these outfits. They're ones that we, I don't know if we would have chosen them, but Probably not. We, we got a chance to last night. Oh. You guys, um, Broadway is such a part of New York, and I think for a lot of people when they come to New York, it's like if you have a checklist, one is to come to Rockefeller Center. Yes. People always love to do that. People want to see the Empire State Building, and people want to go to Broadway. And it was five, if you ask any Broadway star, how many days yes. has it been, they will all tell you 522. 522. They know exactly the number. And it was, you know, for, for Broadway to be shut down, and we actually did mm -hmm. Halloween last year was a tribute to oh, Broadway. Yeah. That's right. Because so so many people that do such important work were not working. Yes. Well, we got to go last night, you guys. Um, Savannah and I went to Wicked. Mm -hmm. Carson and Jenna went to the Lion King, and Al and Craig went to Hamilton. We've both been oh. to lots of Broadway shows. This was like being at a hockey game. It was people were raucous. Like if you love Broadway, if you don't love uh, Broadway, if you're if you're into the show or not, it was like it brought the house down. I don't think I've ever, honestly, Jen, in all the times I've been to Broadway, have I ever seen a crowd explode like this one did. Yeah, and and I think I was surprised by how emotional it was. Yes, I was, was speaking to a woman who yeah. was like, "I'm from here. I'm from here." <laughs> I mean, y'all were having just a blast. People, you know what? There's so many singers who were outside. They they literally they people were singing out loud. And we said, "Okay, you come, come, come!" And one and they by all one, had good voices. They had beautiful voices. They they should all be signed. I don't know what they're doing. Listen. Oh my gosh! Like we were like, "Who are you? And what are you doing?" But it was beautiful. So we are all of the people that I spoke to, like, yeah, totally. there was something about the Lion King. And when you think back to the movie. Or, or if you've seen, yeah. had the privilege to see this beautiful show, it's all about the circle of life. Mm. So I, when the the first opening act and they started singing yes. the circle of life, 
Were you and, sobbing? <laughs> I mean, it was actually embarrassing. And then there were two guys in front of me from Houston, Texas, oh. who watch our show all the oh. time, and they turned around and they were like, "We knew you'd cry. <laughs> you always cry." And a girl that I interviewed before the show from Fort Worth, who lives here, who entered the lottery and got it. Like oh, that's why people love Broadway. Well, the applause sometimes went so long that they had to stop yes. their lines and they were looking out, and I felt like. They've been waiting for that for 522 Ugh. days. It did not stop. And finally, at some point, the actors had to kind of dive in <laughs> and say, well, okay, we got to keep the show going. But it was absolutely beautiful. How about your girls? Yeah, and I brought, I ended up bringing Mila yes. and Poppy last yeah. minute. We got them tested. Yeah. Everybody, we're not wearing masks here because we walked down the street for one photo, but we were all wearing masks. Yeah, you had to inside. wear masks inside and you had to show proof of vaccination. Or, or test. Or so tested. I ran to get them from the bus and I took bail too. And we ran to get them tested. Did. And Vail left. She was like, Savannah called. She said, it's not working. I said, oh, no, no, I have their yeah. results. They're yeah. all going. We're going. And um, we, it was just this beautiful moment to, oh, look at that hug. Vail was so, I don't, I mean, I've seen Vail super happy sometimes when there's a, a concert on yeah. the plaza back in the day. Never like this. She was hugging on to Kristen Chenoweth because, one, they were both the same height, so that was <laughs> cute. But, two, she just said, I want to be an actress. Yes. And Kristen was like, you can. Of course so you can. My kids are like that too. I mean, me yeah. as well. Obviously, yeah. I was like a little Broadway baby yeah. who wanted to be Cosette and Les Mis because it was the only show that I ever saw. But anyway, they just were like to watch their faces mm. and the awe mm. and what these mm. actors and actresses do and like what theater does to people, which is bring people together. And, and what was cool about this particular night was these three shows planned to come together to open last night. That was the big moment that Broadway's opening. So anyway, we just we, we're letting you we know. We could go that, on and yes. on and on. We've lost yeah. our voice. It was amazing. Yeah, it was worth every second. And you know what's going to be so much fun? Mm. Speaking of magic. Mm -hmm. What the West Side Story. Oh my gosh. The trailer dropped. People are going crazy. Yeah, this is the Steven Spielberg one. You guys know it's this big screen adaptation for people who can't, you know, can't go to Broadway. Yeah. This is just as good. Take a look. If you go with him, no one will ever forgive you. Goosebumps all over. I can't wait. All over. Okay, I can't wait. wait. When does it come out? December 10th. More we trailers ahead, uh, but it's it's pretty cool. It's okay. Worth it. Okay. There's a new TikTok challenge that we've heard about. Well, we don't know anything about it. We haven't heard of it. <laughs> no. We know nothing about it. Donna's going to teach just us. We've heard of TikTok. So, um, yes. what do we have? First Donna? of all, I want to go to a Broadway show so bad oh that you guys right. made yes. that magic. Okay. Yeah. So today we're going to try something called the Cotton Ball Challenge. Okay. So first, okay. let's take a look at it. Okay. So you can kind of see what you're about to do. Okay, so essentially what you're yeah what you're going to do is spoon as many cotton okay. balls as you can into your bowls blindfolded okay. in 30 seconds. Okay, I'm saying okay. is there a spoon? So there are spoons right behind oh, oh, you yeah, and little blindfold. Spoon. So you take So this. first can you guys dump the cotton balls out of the bowls okay, please? I'll just, here's mine. Perfect. Let me move this out of the way. <laughs> here's your okay. Go. Uh oh. Here you go. Okay, well. ready to put on Wait, your blindfold. We have, to, we have to spread them out cuz it doesn't really work if they're in a pile. Well, yeah, no, you can't. I guess not yeah, that many balls. You're right. You're right. Okay. Okay. okay, so whenever you guys are ready, okay. put on your blindfolds and we will put the 30 second countdown. Okay, hold on. Let me just see where they up, are. Don't we? We have you to. You don't need to. Okay, ready? 30 seconds? Okay, let's wait. Let where is your the one? Okay, move your, <laughs> you know where your bowl is? Yeah, oh, the water. Okay. That can okay. be a disaster. Water. We know that's going to okay. happen. Okay, we don't All need right. that. Okay. Okay, ready? 30 uh -huh. second countdown ready? clock is wait. on in three, two, one. Go. Can you use your hands? Can you use your hands? Sure. Oh, you can? No, you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. I'm sorry. Sorry. Where's the anything going in? I can't tell. Will y'all tell us if we're doing an okay job? Is anything happening? You're actually doing a great job. Wow. I'm really surprised. Are you looking at mine? No, I'm not. Are you guys looking at mine? I'm not. Are you talking to both of us? You're both doing well. Where's the ball right there? They're both doing well. You're doing a fantastic job. Look at what you've done. Oh. And look at who's next to you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hi, I was 
just looking for the bathroom, and I couldn't help noticing you were playing cotton balls in the bowls. That old favorite pastime of America. Cotton balls in the bowls. And I think you won. Did I? She oh, definitely you, won. She's she so much de better oh with the balls. Oh, my gosh. I might have helped, but you Did definitely you help won. Me? No, Thank you, Nathan. I, no, I do Did Nathan help me? Yeah. Just your spirit. Well, you have it on film. Oh my let's, God. Let's go to the video <laughs> tape, as they say, in sports. Today Talks continues after the break. We have an exclusive chat you can only see here on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope the COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. All right, welcome back to Today Talks. It's our exclusive content. So I just want to point out something that I thought was delightful today. First of all, we're in love with Nathan yes. Lane. You know what I love? He totally used <laughs> Barbara Bush as as the way someone a was random dressing. Cultural and, and we asked him afterwards because he, and we kept saying, you know, that's Jenna's grandmother, and he's like, yeah, yeah. Anyway, and literally, we just literally, we just, <laughs> we just asked him, and he well, said, afterward, Toto goes, I don't think he knew it was your grandmother. I'm like, maybe not. I said, so, I, yeah, he didn't know, but no, you said, I think he did. Well, we yeah, both, we kind of had it back. I bet. thought he was trying to be funny with it. No, but he wasn't. And he goes, I, we go, did you really? Really know it was Jenna's grandmother? He goes, no. He goes, God rest her. And God when I said, that's soul. my grandmother, he goes, God, God rest her soul. <laughs> he was so By the way, much fun. What an entertainer. Nathan Lane, when you understand why he is he is one of the acting legends, don't He's you? A legend. He, there are people, look, everyone comes in with their own energy, and we were just talking about this. Like, have you ever been around somebody? When you're around them, you are electrified. And some people, and sometimes it happens in your own home, yes. you put the key in the door, you walk in, and you're like, Bruh. Oh, yeah. and that's a bummer. It's like trying to be around good well, energy. Well, here's the thing. What? I think it's because I spend so much time with you and no time with anybody <laughs> but you. <laughs> because I'm a reclusive. I forgot that people aren't as positive as you are. It was a very, it's just a strained realization to know that the person you're sitting next to isn't like well, we, everybody else. Well, we have so much, like we're, we're always in the commercials we wanna know yes. about. We're, we're just, we want to help. Like literally Jenna has spent, I'm sorry. But anyway, <laughs> she spent the last three commercial breaks telling me that I need to take time for well, myself. Well, can I explain that this yeah. morning I came in and I can't talk very much and I'm, we both were talking about how exhausted we were and she goes, okay, well Jenna, you need to put time on your calendar to relax. We need to put, that's my intention. I go, so what are you doing? And she was like, not that. <laughs> yeah. So if you're giving me that advice, can you also give yourself that I, advice? This morning I did write down in that intention thing, I said, I'm gonna slow down. And I think sometimes you can have a busy day and still slow down. You can, you can have all the things you have to do, but not fill the in-between time with panic, sprinting, lifts, Looking at your phone. panic. Yeah. yeah, you can still do your tasks and realize that the time in between, like the travel time in between, because yeah. I had a bunch of interviews yesterday. I was yeah. literally running from A to B to C, and I was feel, and then I was upset because the traffic, and now I'm not gonna make I it, and, blah, blah, blah. and then all of a sudden I realized like, okay, I, I know the tasks and I can do those, it's all of this in-between anxiety time, and I'm not, I'm gonna try to slow that part down. Okay, can and we slow it? 
Yeah, I was sounding hyper while I was talking. <laughs> the other but you're thing, right, it does and, calm and you. And finding the things that do fill you up, because the, I haven't felt great, so the last couple of days I've taken a nap, but I've watched junky television during the like during that time so you're not really napping I d and I don't feel you better rest. afterwards no you don't feel better you're losing your voice and that comes from sprinting from thing yes. to thing to thing and I and think over talking and over <laughs> but I, I do think you taking your girls to the Lion King last night oh. was such a brilliant idea because sometimes we'll talk ourselves out of doing things yes. with our kids because it's too late they're gonna you know you, you'll make 15 reasons why you shouldn't do it and there's one reason that you should and that and it's that memory forever yeah. Yeah. Sitting next to them, watching Poppy's face light up. It was Did like really know? the first Broadway show she'll remember. Oh, it was a magical. Magical. Night. And I and I was in that moment. Yeah. I was in that moment. Yeah. You you do. That's one of the things. No matter what's going on, if I tell you, I have to tell you something. Yeah. It's as if there's nobody else in this room. Oh. That's well, pretty I good. Love you. Love you too. We need okay. Therapy. That's anyway, it. that's it. Bye, Goodbye. everybody. Thanks for watching Who's today, watching? all day. Is anybody watching? Are you out all there? the same people in our TikTok? <laughs> Is anybody out there? Sandra, thanks so much for doing this. It's great to see you. Hi, Willie. Great to be with you. I'm very anxious to talk about the chair. I told you I just got to see the first two episodes. Before we do that, though, I want to wish you a very happy milestone birthday. Happy birthday. Much. Thank you. You had an amazing post where you stopped and sort of took stock of your life and career and thanked just about everybody you could think of and recalled all these great shows that, that have made your career what it is. Yes, you know, I'm not a big poster, but I woke up early that morning and my mom had already texted me. <laughs> from there, and she's like, you're basically three time us at eight o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, okay. I woke up and I basically spoke with my parents and milestone birthdays are wonderful times to take stock of things. And I just wanted, to, I was really thinking about you know, my friendships and my family and actually uh, my work. And I just really wanted to thank everybody, you know. It was, it, it, it's a great uh, immediate way to send out a message. I, it, was, it was great to do, you know. Is, is it overwhelming in some ways to stop at this point and say, oh, because you are moving so fast in your life and your career to stop and say, oh, wow, look at, the, look at all the things I've done in these years. You know, actually doing stuff like, like this, of speaking to people who will ask me questions like this, <laughs> those are the moments that I actually have to stop and go, oh, what have I been doing? What have I been trying to make? Because people will put things into perspectives that I have not thought of. Um, and it's a really good checkup. Well, you've got something great to celebrate with the chair, the new series on Netflix. Oh, there she is. Our first lady chair woman. Explain for people who are thinking about watching it, sort of the, the plot, and also what about this great character drew you in? The Chair is a dramedy, and it's kind of like a workplace comedy that's set in academia. So I play the, uh, the role of ji Kim, Professor Kim, who's just been the newly minted chair in the English department at, a, at Pembroke University, it's a fictitious university. And it's centered around a transgressive act that one of the fellow professors, uh, Bill Dobson, played by Jay Duplass, does in class. And it's then navigating as the chair how to manage the fallout from a, a very ill-informed mistake and how to keep um, her, the department, the English department, and in like the humanities relevant. But it also touches on so many things without uh, being pointed at it. It's like what it is to be a woman and a person of color who enters into a leadership role, who's trying to change a very antiquated and patriarchal white system. You know what I mean? How she relates to her students and to her coworkers, how she relates to her elderly father, how she relates to her adoptive daughter. Um, so it was a great opportunity to play such a, a a dynamic and full-fleshed role. And I give all the credit to Amanda Pete who created this world. As you say, she steps into this place that has been run forever by old white guys. And in many cases, these are cartoonish old white guys kind of fumbling around, hanging on to their tenure. Could you dig into some personal experience as a woman of color who stepped into these prominent roles and, and roles of leadership and sort of understand what she was going through? Sure. 
And I'll also I'll try and frame also that hopefully, hopefully no one is a caricature in this piece. So even though you have, you know, older white professors, male professors, one, you know, the brilliant Bob Balaban who plays uh, Professor uh, Elliot Rance, hopefully you're seeing his perspective on, on the effect of, of being the older generation and perhaps not have paid enough close attention to what the students want and how they need to learn. So I'll just start with that. And then uh, the next part of your question, which is like, do I know what it's like? Um, yeah, yeah, I do. And I, I think that that has got to have informed how I approach, you know, Jian. I, I, I can't exactly specifically point to what, but um, one of the things that I, I feel like I have learned in my career that is a little bit uh, ahead of Professor Kim is, um, is that change is slow when you are an individual facing an institution. And for me not to lose heart because for anyone who knows who's tried to enact change, it's never the way that you think it's going to happen. Right. And the challenges are there for you to only get more specific and deeper into your commitment to change. Um, and I, I, you just see Professor Kim just trying to balance all these things at once. Um, and so you have a real good balance of comedy and pathos. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Boom. Boom. Shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Dr. Kim's name, which as, a, as an Asian woman, you, as an American woman, you say that was really important that her name was authentically Korean. Can you explain that a little bit? Sure. It's like I can trace, I feel like how Hollywood has progressed or widened. You know, when I was on Grey's Anatomy for 10 years as Christina Yang, it was the Obama years. And uh, specifically, the, the show never addressed people's ethnicity nor did it really kind of address people's home lives. It just was the style of the show. So I never got to really necessarily explore what other parts of Christina was. And then with uh, the show um, Killing Eve, I was able to bring a certain aspect of Eve's uh, uh, cultural heritage in the third season, but that's what the show is not really about that. It's the show is really about the exploration of and the discovery of of a, a woman's own psyche. But in the chair, when I first opened that first page of the pilot and I saw that Dr. Kim's name is, is Jean Kim, uh, I just noted it in terms of the growth of my own career that now I can, I can play a character who specifically has a Korean name and all the characters are gonna call her that name correctly. And I do, it was significant to me. Um, I think 
uh, there's been a lot of accommodation or denial or just not existence of the fact that people have um, their in their names their ethnicity is 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 in their names. So it was just great to it was great to see and it was really important to me. Yeah. It feels like this fits into something you've been thinking about in your recent roles, which is to give authentic Asian experiences in the in the parts you take and in your performances different, as you say, from something like Grey's Anatomy, which just sort of fit into the plot, you can sort of tell more of the story. And I feel like we see that in the chair when she goes home and her father lives with her and we see symbols of religion on the wall, which you've talked about in your, old chi in your own childhood. So what does it mean to you personally to be able to have that power in Hollywood to say, this is how the role is going to be. This is how I'm going to play that. Well, it's definitely not as let's say cut and dry in that way, because for me, it's more like finding the right collaborators, finding, cause I am, I'm not a writer at this point in my life, you know what I mean? But I'm not, I never want to, I never want to limit myself, but uh, uh, it's about trying to find the world and, and, and the voices that I am interested in, in uh, inhabiting and collaborating with. So, you know, Amanda set the whole world. This was always going to be a part of it. Uh, Dr. Kim was always going to be taking care of an elderly parent, and she was always going to be taking care of an adoptive daughter. So no matter what, you get to open up a lot of story dynamic with that. And that was also one of the things that really, really interests me. And is there a lot more of that now, Sandra, Is just by virtue of all the different outlets that we have for those shows added with a heightened consciousness and awareness that we need more of it? I, I, you know what? I think so. I'm almost afraid to say, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and anyone who's a person of color knows what I'm doing when I'm saying, I don't even want to say that it might be true, but it might be true because there is more openness to it because there is uh, more interest in it. What I hope develops alongside of it is a certain type of patience and a certain type of support that comes in the form of development. You know, voices have to be developed. Do you know if you suddenly want a, a, a storyline based on X, Y, Z, because it's you seem to think that the public wants it, you need to develop the voices to be able to take on those leadership roles to make that happen. Because ultimately what it depends on is that the storytelling is interesting and authentic and true. You know what I mean? Because you can have whoever you want on camera. It doesn't matter. But if it's not interesting, if it is not truthful, I don't think people will watch it. I think that's probably right. And, and as you talk about bringing your own experience to roles like this, I love reading the story of your own upbringing outside Ottawa, where you really had to convince your parents that performance and acting was the thing for you. You were proven to be very right. Um, but what were those early years like when you said, mom and dad, I know you maybe don't get this, but this is what I want to do. You know, I'm one of those extremely lucky people who have a good relationship with their parents. And what I've learned uh, from that experience uh, and obviously growing and maturing as a person is that adversity is extremely important in the development of a person's character. And the time, you know, my parents are immigrants from South Korea, you know what I mean? And in a very, very, very typical uh, Korean American immigrant kind of upbringing, just very middle of the road typical education and having a good job and security is very important. Anyone who's a child of an immigrant knows this. Um, so my parents, it was very, very foreign, you know, the entertainment world or the artistic world. It was very, very, very foreign to them. But what I am so blessed with is that the way that they were an obstacle to me, it only makes you tougher in a good way. I've spoken about this before. It's like, you know, if you have the two most important people telling you that you shouldn't do it or that you can't do it, you uh, and you still do it anyway. You do it anyway. Um, you have, a, uh, you just built an internal confidence and you can only build that by going through it. So 
when you are pounding the pavement, when people are saying no, when you have self-doubt, you already have a certain layer of confidence because you've already surpassed, you know, uh, the, the doubt of the two most important people to you. I, I was very lucky in my, in, my, in my career so far, you know, in the early days, I had success quite early. Yeah. And I was able to show them very full pieces, you know, where the entire film was about my character. I did this film early on by Mina Shum called Double Happiness. And it was about this character named Jade Lee, who wants to be an actress, is in a very typical Chinese Canadian home. And it's a very simple coming of age story where she just eventually leaves home to pursue her dreams. When my parents saw that, my mom said to me, is this what you basically wanted to tell us? Mm. And I just felt so seen by her. Like she got it. I mean, my parents really eased off the, the gas pedal because I was fortunate enough to be able to show them my work. And they could understand that, um, that there's meaning in, in that work. And I think it's a little... It's a little tricky and hard for immigrant parents, let's just say, to understand that if their child is an artist, uh, just to, to not be afraid, even if they fail, or even if they're hungry and just eating pizza for three days. If, they're, if you see your child that wants to be an artist in some sort of way, just to, just to give them a little space to try it out. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The moment when you win the Golden Globe for Killing Eve, you get up there and they showed on the broadcast, I think before you even got to the microphone, your parents. And your dad stands up and breaks into applause and you're doing okay and then you see them, you, whew, you could see it sort of wash over you. What was that moment like to see your parents who were skeptical at the outset stand in the back and watch you receive this huge award and to watch their daughter be so successful at what she chose to do? You know, I have been shameless with my parents. I have brought them to so many awards. <laughs> they froze. They really, really froze. But it's profoundly, profoundly satisfying that when you reach a certain type of milestone, and I would say that for me, it was hosting the show, um, that uh, your parents who support you so deeply are actually there in the audience. Yeah, it's profoundly... Um, I, 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 satisfying to be able to come to a certain point in your career when in the moment that you're celebrated that your parents get to witness it 
I mean, you should ask them what they thought. About. <laughs> it, I honestly, it's, it was, it's such a blur, you know, it's such a blur, but it was also um, really important to me to be able to publicly thank them, you know, and, and, you know, you don't, you, you, I, I mean, I'm honestly just doing it in, in the moment because my parents are there, but, but um, subsequently I, I just re I, I, it was reflected back to me that I think that it meant a lot to uh, a lot of child children of immigrants mm. and a lot of uh, Asian American kids and just people uh, to be able to express gratitude and love to their parents publicly. I don't think I have to ask them. I saw their faces that night. <laughs> I think they were pretty proud. I think they were pretty proud. So you talked about that early success in Canada and then you make the leap over to American television and you mentioned Arliss. I think most people point to Sideways as the breakout moment for you. Did it feel that way in real time when everyone said, oh, who's she? I like her, let's put her in more stuff. <laughs> you know, I think it was actually a timing thing because um, Sideways and Grey's Anatomy happened at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So those are those, uh, you know, just mysterious times of like, you know, uh, the stars are aligned. And I think that did happen. And, you know, working on Sideways was one of the highlights of my career. It's, just, I, it's I think it still holds up. It's Definitely. been like a while now, but I, I think it still holds up. So that kind of like one, two punch of like Sideways and then Grey's Anatomy, it was, uh, uh, it was a, a, a real, <laughs> a real shot out of the cannon. Um, but I, but I also am, am so happy that, you know, it happened in my early thirties. So I already had, uh, a, a career behind me and, a and a fairly good amount of grounding to be able to, uh, receive, uh, what that meant to suddenly come into people's consciousness. And it kind of felt like it seems that with that sideways success, you said to yourself, I don't have to do the girlfriendy sidekicky thing. I can be front and center, be a central character. When you make those certain like leaps in your career, you change the point of view of what you're going to accept. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, it was not like, it was not in the terms of, I don't want to be. XYZ. Right. It was very much like I only want to play um, dynamic characters. I only want to play things that inspire me. And that's that's always a really challenging time to be able to move your career into a place of inspiration as opposed to of necessity. So mm -hmm. I was very lucky to be able to decide and start practicing that. And that's that's definitely when Grayson and I came along. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. So Grey's Anatomy comes along. You talk about being shot out of a cannon. There's no bigger cannon to be shot out of in terms of a show that was right in the cultural zeitgeist that people were talking about the morning after all the time. 
What was it like in your life to be thrust onto that show, to have this big role on the biggest show on TV, to have more and more people interested in your life, to know who you are, to say hello to you on the street? How did it change your life? Well, that's a big question. <laughs> big question. And uh, I don't think that, I mean, I'm guessing that to be perfectly honest, it was traumatic. Hmm. <laughs> it's traumatic. And the reason why I'm saying that is uh, I don't know whether it's just I come from a different generation or my temperament as an artist is that you know that the best work or the work that you or, or the circumstances you need to do your work is with a lot of privacy. Hmm. Um, and that's and that's just to find the authentic self. And so when one loses one's anonymity, you have to build skills uh, to still try and be real. Um, so I know this is probably not an answer that people are particularly interested in, but it is a truthful one. But having been in it, I've I've grown to adapt and I've grown, it really forces you to, to grow internally, for at least for me, internally, to be able to, I, I mean, I went from uh, not being able to go out or not being able to go, like hiding in restaurants or never looking out, to then being able to receive and manage, um, and manage projection, manage attention, uh, manage expectation while not losing the sense of self. And that takes a little while to figure out. How do you do it though? How do you do it when all the eyeballs in the restaurant are on you? How do you say, okay, this is my life. It's not normal, but it's my life. Here's how I'm gonna manage it. How did you make those adjustments? Because I've heard the same from other actors who've been shot out of a cannon on a big show or a big movie and all of a sudden their life like that, the weekend the movie comes out is totally different. Mm. Um, well, have a good therapist. <laughs> I'm not joking. Important. Yeah. No, I'm not joking. It's very, very important because there's a lot that one would need to talk about that you should not talk about with your partner or friends or family. You don't burden them with that. It's a very specific road. And so one have a good therapist. Hopefully you have a good support system, a support network, you know. I am very lucky that I do have a very great support system. Um, and you just have to work at finding your way to stay grounded. And a lot of times that's by saying no. Hmm. You've done well with it, certainly. And from the, the question that always comes up when someone leaves a show like that is, okay, what do you do from there? What next? And here comes Killing Eve and you have this other great success where, as I said, you win another Golden Globe Award. Uh, what was it about that part that so attracted you and what makes that show so popular? People are so obsessed with it. <laughs> no, I, I can tell you definitely what intrigued me um, was Phoebe Waller-Bridge's tone. Yeah. Because I had not seen it before. And I knew it was fresh. Like, I really knew it was fresh right off the page. And I knew I could, I knew I could follow it. I like the circumstance where, you know, it's this kind of very middle of the road, middle of her life woman. And every woman who then develops an extremely dangerous and obsessive relationship with, a, with an assassin. Like those are crazy circumstances. <laughs> but what I could also see in the piece, which I was very interested in exploring, that it's about a woman's self discovery and that was ultimately what was so intriguing and and hopefully that element as well as um a type of very um exciting uh push and pull relationship between eve and villanelle is exciting to people uh but mostly, it's, I, I hope it is, is that you see these two women trying to figure out themselves by somehow needing to be in relationship with each other. And that was really interesting. That was really, really interesting to me. Like, how, how do you figure out how to be in relationship with a character that wants to kill you? <laughs> right. 
That's a big question. <laughs> That's a big question. Well, part of the fun of the show is that you have a different woman writing every season. So can you give us a little look ahead to season four of what your fans might expect? Well, I honestly, I am just in the middle. I'm here in London, just in the middle of shooting the, the season four, the last season of Killing Eve. And I can tell you nothing. I knew it. Except oh, I thought I might break you, Sandra. <laughs> Except that, you know, we're really, really working hard to try and like really honor that relationship and 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 to find out what their how their story not ends, but somehow somehow finishes at, at this moment. You know, um that's what we're really working hard on, trying to find that 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 way to, to service all those characters beautifully. Very diplomatic answer. It felt like you were giving something and you really weren't. You were such a pro, such a pro. <laughs> Sandra, I really appreciate your time. Congratulations on the chair. It's so fun to talk to you. I know you're busy working, so thanks for taking the time. Thank you so much. It's okay. a Girl Scout cookie. Yes, a brand new Girl Scout cookie, and it's joining the mix. They're calling it Adventureful. Come on, Silver Fox. Oh, hey, come on, Jerry. Foxy. Wow, you're a fox. These are called Adventurefuls, y'all. These are the new so Girl Scout cookies. They have chocolate and caramel. And they're brownie inspired they're with brownie some sea inspired. salt. Oh, my God. You know these are good. Okay, ready? Uh huh. One. Oh, you already did. Two. Two. I didn't bite yet. Three. Three. Mm. Rank it. Mm. Rank it in the world of mm. in the world of Girl Scouts. Tagalongs, mm -hmm. thin mints, and then these. I say thin mints only if they're frozen. Uh -huh. Tagalongs. Mm -hmm. I have to say, and I hate to. And these are delicious, but I would give a shortbread before this. Is that bad? Mm -mm. But Samoas. No. Wait, Samoas. What's a tagalong? I forgot. The tagalong is a delicious one that I always liked. As a Which one. is the one with coconut on it? That's circle. I like a Samoa. You like the Samoa better than the tagalong? I like the Samoa. What's the tagalong? Tagalong is the chocolate and peanut butter oh, one that is the no, delish. You I do like not like that. that. No, I do like it. Okay. But mine goes. Sorry, I'm confused. Okay. Samoa. Number first. one. Samoa that's is news. definitely number one. Mm -mm. Then tagalong, then thin mint, and then these. They're all good. They are good. They're real good. I mean, I would eat any of them, but if we're going to put them, you don't like a shortbread? A, a shortbread, I feel like you can just eat a little. And I have to say something that's going to be controversial, but the lemon, the new lemon cookie. Oh, I love those. Oh, those are real good, Would you good put too. that above this, too? Please don't push this far. <laughs> There's only so far down you can push this cookie, and it's delicious. <laughs> What's the one that nobody likes? I forgot. Anybody? <laughs> that, just that plain peanut butter one? I mean, it's just boring. Oh, yeah. I kind of like it. We are back to help you sleep better today. And one reason you could be fatigued is maybe due to what you're eating or maybe rather what you're not eating. Oh, we need eating. to know. So Dr. Amy Shaw is renowned for her extensive knowledge on gut health. She's also the author of the new book, I'm So Effing Tired. <laughs> Uh-oh, I didn't know you could say that. A proven plan to beat burnout, boost your energy, and reclaim your life. Dr. Shaw, welcome. Thank you so much for having me to both of you. Oh, well, thank you. So Dr. Shaw, what, what do you think is the biggest complaint? Mm -hmm. You know, everybody is tired. I think yeah. this year has made people tired. Right. But what do you yeah. hear from your patients? That is the number one thing I hear. I'm so effing tired, the title of the book. For far too long, women's concerns about why we're so tired have been dismissed. I mean, it, maybe it's because we're getting older or because we're put, you know, we're not trying hard enough, but I knew there's more than that. So I really looked into it further. It's about, you know, what we're eating, when we're eating and stress management. All right, well, let's talk about then that then, because we know, like I know for myself, if I eat like a piece of salmon and broccoli before I go yes. to bed, and if I wake up the next day, I, I feel better. You're gonna feel great. I always feel yes. better. Yeah. So this is about, so what are the things we should be putting into our body that will help us rest and also have more energy in the next day? It's true. I mean, we can all relate to how tempting it is to have the sweets right yeah. before bed, and especially when we're so tired. But these are not the energy fixes we actually want, especially when we 
eat them or drink them close to bed. We actually want to be rebuilding our gut health, our immune health, our hormone health, this energy trifecta, uh, interconnected way that we get energy. So you want to be eating foods that build up that gut bacteria that gets damaged. With just two nights of sleep, you damage the good gut bacteria. Um, so you really want to rebuild Wait. that when, you, when, two- when you're chronically sleep deprived. Something oh. like, you know, Jerusalem artichokes, broccoli, asparagus, ginger, onions, garlic, yams. These are amazing ways to feed that good gut bacteria with prebiotic fiber. Okay, so if you have two bad nights of sleep, your gut health can, can, you know, there's the- Deteriorate. Can deteriorate. So what are some foods Mm -hmm. that are bad too for the gut health? And probably it also connects with sleeping. I I assume if you're eating something that's not good for your gut health, you're also not sleeping as well. Yes. Things, you you know, when you're tired, you really want to automate your meals. You want to be getting some bright sunlight yeah. to wake you up and then eat some automated breakfast that you love, like a prebiotic breakfast bar or a smoothie bowl, like a green smoothie bowl here with berries. You really want to automate your meals and eat things that are going to be good for that gut bacteria so you can rebuild that energy trifecta, the hormones, the immune system, and the gut, the very base of how we get our energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the title of your book is I'm So Effing Tired, and I think a lot of people are feeling that. Um, And I know this is a little off point, but other than the foods that we should be eating, Mm -hmm. how do you advise your patients? Because we want more energy in the morning. We want to feel good throughout the course of the day. Sometimes it's lack of sleep, but sometimes it's other stuff too. Yeah, I feel that too. So we have an internal clock called circadian rhythms and syncing your body with circadian rhythms is one of the most effective ways to get sustained natural energy and fix that energy trifecta. Something like getting natural sunlight for Mm -hmm. a few minutes Mm -hmm. in the morning, Mm -hmm. something like not eating before bed two hours, it's called circadian intermittent fasting. So you know we are supposed to be doing things in light and dark, so really sticking with that. And then what you had mentioned before in the show, not maybe not not having the screens right before bed, maybe even just 30 minutes uh, screenless yeah. time and so get a good night's sleep. Mm-hmm. Quickly, will you just tell us the foods we should avoid right before yeah. bed and yeah. the foods we should be eating? Yes, before bed, you don't want to be eating a lot of chocolate, yep. a lot of wine. I mean, one glass is good, but you know, people just think three glasses is better. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. Um, You don't want to be having your coffee late at night. Even though, you know, tea is one of the most antioxidant, anti-inflammatory foods, you don't want to have caffeine right before bed. Um, And that goes without saying, but Mm -hmm. there's a few foods that can help you sleep, induce melatonin, the Mm. melatonin, the sleep hormone that gets released two to three hours before bed. So tart, dark uh, cherries, uh, tart cherries, Mm. um, olives are a really great way to induce melatonin and nuts. Who doesn't love their nuts nuts. and seeds? So something that you can snack on a few hours before bed. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Shaw. Thank you so much, Dr. Shaw. And you can check out Dr. Shaw's book at today.com slash shop. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. You (laughs) are. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. 
Okay, so there, it's somebody that we're really excited to meet. There's a buzzy new chef lighting up social media with his impressive culinary skills. Okay, guys, he's two and a half years old. His name is Chef Illyrian. He's from Great Neck, New York. He's got 350,000 followers, about to have more. He's on TikTok. He okay. makes everything from soup to steak to desserts. <laughs> and his mom is always there to supervise, of course, and capture the magic. So look who we have with us today. Hi, guys. Oh, my gosh. Hi. Hi, Larian. What are you making, honey? You're good. You're good. Are, what do you make? Is oh, that, that your a truck? Tr oh no, what is that? Oh, That's your like truck. truck. Alarian, what do you want to cook today? Um, what did you make today? A roasted chicken. A truck. <laughs> well, That's a cool truck, Alarian. I like your truck a lot. What do you want to cook for us? <laughs> no, wait, Kalirian, will you do, will you show me something? Will you show me how you can crack an egg? How can you crack an egg? You <laughs> want it. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Oops. Oh, what? Wow. Wait, one handed? How did you yeah. do that? Kalirian. <laughs> <laughs> Plop it right in there. More, Alarian, more, more, more eggs. What's your favorite thing to cook, Alarian? What do you like to make? What's your oh. favorite thing to cook? What's your favorite thing to cook? <laughs> He's like popping. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> okay. Oh. Wait, you are amazing. Alarian, okay. Will you cook something will you for Hoda? Will you make some chicken for us? And please? then maybe we'll put it on our show later. Wait, I'm to All right, or just make some eggs. I think you should make some eggs. By the way, Mom, your son is amazing, okay? We are so thrilled to have him on. I know, by the way, this is going to be viral, okay? <laughs> Simply because he's cracking more eggs than I've ever seen anyone do. <laughs> All right, enjoy your chicken. We want to try it sometime, Chef Valerino, okay? Say bye. 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 We love you, and we love your truck. So cute. Oh, he's a fun-loving, big-talking seventh grader who really adores food, and he's making a name for himself on Instagram. Luca Marconi is Brooklyn native who dishes out colorful food reviews on social media, and he doesn't hold back. Luca, we're going to chat with you in just a minute, but first, you guys check out Luca in action. Here we go. Here we go. What's up, guys? Look at two times here. My nickname is Look Two Times. 12-year-old Luca Marconi has always been around good food. Motto, that filet mignon. Motto. Every time on Sunday, I always have very good food from an Italian family. Sunday dinner is when your whole family gathers together, have a great pasta, subrasate, cascaval, bread. Can't forget the bread. And he's not shy about critiquing it. I don't like that. The way he would explain food as a little kid, I'm like, you know, this kid's talented, and then... You know, fast forward a couple of years later, we started doing like fun videos on Instagram. It's gonna be a nice wombo combo with the chicken tongues. He quickly became an Instagram sensation. You have to eat in style, baby, right out of the show. It has been crazy. I got one video with like 100,000 views. Luca's family friend Sabino owns a deli in Brooklyn. I like to call my momager. He takes Luca all over New York City to try new food. Luca does a review and gives it a rating. 840. 100 thumbs up. 1,000 thumbs up. So it goes from 100 to 1,000. I want to be nice to some people. Like, let's say you get 100, that's one out of 10. But you know, they'll think, oh, 100. Thank you, Luca. Thank you. No. Bad review. He's very charismatic in a world where a lot of kids are, you know, doing what the crowd's doing, he's doing what he wants to do. People love me because I'm always positive, always have a good attitude. My favorite thing that I've ever eaten was probably Nutella pizza. That was crazy. Today, Luca's changing it up for a new review. All right, I got something different for you, Luca. Oh. I'm gonna introduce you oh. to an acai bowl. Acai is like a Brazilian berry. So what they do is they blend it, and then they put a little peanut butter, strawberries, and bananas on top. Try to get a little bit of everything in your bite. I get a little bit of that, a little bit of the strawberry. It tastes like this, like a smoothie. It's good though, right? Finger licking good. All right, so I would give this an 820. They just use fresh ingredients. That's why I love it so much. 
And when you use fresh ingredients, it doesn't matter what it is, it tastes good and it's healthy. You know? So this is Luca two times, and I am out. Luca! All right. All right. Oh, we're back. Yes. How are I, you? I don't Absolutely. totally understand the scoring. <laughs> yeah. So you know it's confusing. Yeah. A lot of people think that. It's a hundred to a thousand, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I love that. But how did you get? How did you even get started in this? I you mean, know, there was huh. just like one day. You know, my manager Sabino, as you saw on the <laughs> screen, <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, Sabino. Yeah, I got you. I'm gonna make you meet someone." But you know, he's just always been the guy where like, always bring out crazy stuff. Like one day I did a pose of a Nutella milkshake for his um, photo, for his um, shop. Uh -huh. He said, oh yeah, it's bigger than Michael Jordan. I was like, oh really? <laughs> it was like when I was four though. But then it's like, you know, it's just crazy, but really, I, he said, yeah, you're gonna meet someone. I thought it was gonna be like LeBron James or someone. Yeah, yeah who was Ended it? Ended up being New York Nico. I don't know if you know him. I don't know. Him. Shout out to him, though. Uh, Very good guy. <laughs> hey, uh, what'd you bring us today? What are we eating? Burrata pizza. Burrata. Oh, where's See, this from? Um, Leon Industry. You okay. want the address? Just in case you want yeah, to go. Yeah, tell me the address. 254 South 2nd Street. Okay. Uh, I like memorized that while I was waiting. Okay, good. Um, so, yeah, it's just burrata. Basil, I take yeah. it off. Personally, hate it. You don't it. like basil. You don't like basil. No. Uh oh. No. Big pieces of parmesan. I see they're generous today. Okay. Yeah. So okay. what? <laughs> And burrata, usually they bring one, but they have two today. They did two. Okay, mm. so give it a try. Give us your, your score. Yeah, we Let's need this. We need the okay, score we'll from Luca. It. Hold on. Uh -huh. Crunchy. This is a palette right here. Tom See, I already had it already. I'll give it like a thousand. A thousand? A thousand? Yeah. Tom? Wow. <gasps> so does oh everyone God. want you to review their food now? Do they say, Luca, come over to my restaurant? Yeah. Yeah? But yeah. I don't talk unless I get paid. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> You're talking here. Okay. <laughs> I yeah, got bad news for you. Event. There's no check coming. Trust me. Exactly. I, I've asked. <laughs> Trust me. I, I, I may be taking the subway home today. Um, so, I mean, are, how much more will you... So, how often do you do a video? Do you post one every week or... Yeah, once every... Probably, yeah, once every week. Great. Well, I did one filet mignon Cheetos. It was pretty good. Filet mignon Cheetos? Yeah, mm. it was pretty crazy. But it, yeah. I don't know. It was like a... Luca, you're going to have to come back on our show again. Oh, yes. Show. Are you going to end up being a chef? Is that what you want to be or just yeah. a food critic? I'll come back when the Vikings make the Super Bowl. Oh! oh. That's some smack talk. Luca just down. Oh, uh -huh. wow. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you what you must know. The biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We have a unique edition of Foodie Friday this morning. Mm -hmm. So earlier this week, Hoda made the very brave choice mm -hmm. to what? eat Oreos dipped in mustard. Well, that's because somebody said this was following a viral crossword clue that everyone is still a little bit confused about. Okay, okay, so then it was 
was yuck. I mean, I tried to stomach it, but yuck. Okay, so after that moment, a lot of you shared some of your weird, weird food combos. Okay, this so, one is from Shelly. Yeah, she's from Waterbury, Vermont. She says, peanut butter on hot dogs. Ew. You're gonna go for it? Well, I mean, she said, you have to just take a little tiny there, And also, just like, look the how corner. they put the just peanut butter on this baby. I'm really. Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> this is dangerous. Bad. <sighs> okay. okay, gross. Crystal? All right, we love you, honey. From California. I know. Do you think this is something she likes? I, I'm not sure. I think she was just daring okay. us to eat something. Crystal from California suggested another PB creation. Peanut butter and mayo and pickles? No, no, no. Did we add the pickles? What Did is this? Did we add the pickles? Well, taste it as good, they said. Okay. It, it, this is so mean. One, two. Not as bad. Mm. <laughs> really not as bad. The hot dog was worse. I took a very Wait. small bite. I took a very small bite. I want to look at Jenna's bite. <laughs> That's not, you ate the corner of the bread. That I doesn't even. I don't like mayonnaise. I, I don't like mayonnaise. All right. Okay, next, finally, um, from Jamie. From Peoria, Illinois. She says her weirdest combo is Doritos dipped in canned frosting. I love a Dorito. I, I don't want to ruin it. I did the Oreo. You got to do that. Okay. All right. This is probably good. I don't know, man. A little. She, ooh. Mm -mm. Okay. Is that enough? Mm -mm. You need to get in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Is it yucky? Mmm. <laughs> How is it? Not good? Mm -mm. Okay, great. I just don't right. recommend doing any of these things. No. Okay. All right. Okay. So they do say, though, that people who try new things, <laughs> new novel foods are more open to adventure. But I don't so think this that. is what it means by novel foods. No, I don't even Like, a peanut butter hot dog is not a novel food. I think they mean, like, going out to sushi, you know? <laughs> okay, raise your hand if you haven't thought about what you're making for dinner tonight. You All right. haven't thought about it? You tonight? Have, you've thought about no, it. No, not tonight. Okay. I don't know. Tonight <laughs> is probably chirping chicken. <laughs> All right. That's, All right. Well, if your hands up, follow along with the recipe. A simple one pot chicken dish, courtesy of Le Cordon Bleu trained chef and occasional model, Ooh. Ray Rose Trey Ray. Oh, I'm sorry. We see the model part. Yes, hey. we do. How are you? What's up, Hoda? What's up, Jenna? How, How are, are you? So great to see you. Okay, so we're going to make Thanks a for one. Having me. We're so excited. Tell us what you're going to make for us. All right, so we're going to be making my chicken Dijon with mm. Tuscan kale. Now, you know, we're just going to jump into it. I'm going to start by seasoning my chicken with some salt. I have some cinnamon here, mm, yeah. some cinnamon. cardamom. Now, these warm spices are amazing, especially during the winter time. I got a nice hot pan here. I'm going to sear my chicken. What's your skin technique? Side down. Tell us how you do it. Skin side down. Skin side down. Skin side down. Skin side down. You want it to be, you know, nice and golden. That crispy skin is exactly mm -hmm. what we're going for. Mm -hmm. At that seven minute mark, this is exactly what it oh, looks like. Wow. Look at that. Crispy, delish, delish. So we're going to put that to the side, right? Mm -hmm. Then, this is my favorite thing about cooking, building these flavor profiles. I'm going to add in my garlic. Mm -hmm. I'm going to deglaze with some white wine. Mm, look at that. It. I'm going to add in some Dijon. Yes. I have some, you know, mustard powder here, some chicken stock. All about building these flavor profiles, and that's what cooking is about. Mm. Once you have all of that incorporated, Let's get... once you have all of that incorporated, you can now add in your chicken your potatoes, these are Yukon potatoes. Oh, I love Yukon like, you know, gold. The starch from this is incredible. And, and have those already been body. cooked or those are raw? These are raw. So these are raw and they're gonna, the technique we're using is called braising. Braising simply means to cook your ingredients in a liquid form, slow and steady. But it's hard to get that crispy skin and maintain it. So mm. I'm gonna show you my way. Mm. We're gonna pop this Whoa. in the oven. And then this is exactly what we're going for. Well, let's it's see, rich. Let's see. It's, it has so much body. And, you know, Ooh. don't forget to take out your how, aromatics how long did that you are here. How long did you cook that for, hon? 
So on the stove, I had it simmering for 10 minutes. You bring it to a simmer for 10 minutes, pop it in the oven for another 10 to 15 minutes. Ooh. And then this is exactly what you get here. It's rich, it's bold, and it's delicious. The potatoes are just soaking. You have the crispy skin still on top, but literally the rest of the chicken is just soaking in that delicious broth. And then, yes, what? I'm going to add in the Tuscan oh, kale, kale here. Kale. Exactly. Do you need to massage that kale before you put it in there? <laughs> just a little. You got to massage it just a tad just bit. Just a little. But, you know, it helps. <laughs> and then we're going to add in, you like you can use, you know, any hearty greens. And you want to wilt it, but you still want it to be, you know, still have a bite to it. Mm -hmm. um, then I'm going to garnish it with some salt. I'm going to season it a little more with some salt. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add in some parmigiano. Yes. Mm. All over there. Right like that. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Extra. Extra. Don't be shy with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then I'm going to add in, you know, a squeeze of lemon juice. And that's going to also consist of All right. um, some lemon zest. Rose, show us your final product because that looks it so really good. It really does. We all want it for it's, dinner. It literally is delish. I mean, look at that. Oh, Ro Rose, that's Rose, you incredible. Did it again. Well, that's incredible. Um, keep us posted on your career. I know you're going to be world famous. Yes, soon. you are. That looks Modeling, so good. Thank cooking. you. Everything. You do it all. Thank you, Rose. Thank you for Bye. having me. Appreciate Thank it. you. We appreciate it. All right. To get one. this you recipe, sure. which I think we'll all be making for dinner tonight, mm -hmm. head to today.com slash food. We'll be back right after this. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. So last week, I was telling you about the snack that I learned about on Insta. <laughs> you take a date, and remember I told you the whole thing? Yes. You nuke it, you put in some dark chocolate and, and some I almond butter. Put, yeah, you stuff salt. it with some stuff. Stuff it in. Anyway, um, <laughs> it happens to be a recipe that we got from one of our recipe developers who used to work here, Sama Dada. Yes. She used to be a PA here. Okay, so let's... So. Well, she, when she said I wasn't doing that she right. She said that you weren't doing it right. Even though you said this was your favorite was snack of all time. It was delicious. And you told everybody about it. <laughs> I know how to do it. Let's, Let's see. see. <laughs> Hoda, I know you and your mom love these chocolate covered stuff dates, so I'm going to show you exactly how to make them. Super easy, and I always keep them in my freezer for emergencies. You know what I mean? So what we're gonna do, we've got our dates. I'm just gonna pit them and leave a little bit of a crevice for our favorite nut or seed butter. I'm using almond butter here, so I'm just gonna put that straight in there. After that, I'm just gonna let them take a bath in our melted chocolate. I melted this with a little bit of coconut oil, um, just so it's smooth and glossy. Let that take a swim. Put that in the freezer for 25 to 30 minutes until the chocolate is hardened. It's gonna look like this. I like to finish it with a little bit of flaky sea salt, and you've got the best and easiest snack. Enjoy. Okay. Wait a minute, yeah. Dada eats. See, I was confused because you told me to <laughs> stuff it with chocolate. <laughs> so I didn't make I the didn't, perfect combo. If I had my phone, I would have Insta proof. By the way, they're both delicious because Sama makes nothing but delicious things. But the one I saw 
which I think was on Instagram, unless no. I'm dreaming, is you put the dark chocolate square I don't think so. inside because who's making a bath I this think, time? Well, you don't like baths. <laughs> I know you don't for yourself, but that date was supposed to swim in and, chocolate. And then what? Then you put it in the fridge? Yeah, Too then you many put it steps. in the freezer. Nobody you wants it frozen. You want Here's it hot. Like. You know what I like? <laughs> I like the melted chocolate in the peanut buttery nut butter thing with the salt and the date. Do you know what I think <laughs> this is called for? I think we need to have a date off. I want one of Sama's, I okay. want one of okay. yours. Okay, okay. And I will pick the best date. May okay. the best date win. Okay, but I need to make mine here because it has to be nuked and it has well, to be don't served. Don't worry, there's more. a microwave right there. <laughs> there's nobody <laughs> in the kitchen ever. By the way, Sama's got great, yes. great Instagram creations. It's her, She's got, her Insta site is at Dada, D-A-D-A, -A -A, eats. Dada. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just correcting everything you do. It's Dada. Like, Dada. You said Dada. It's Dada. Um, she came over to cook with my girls once. It was so cute. We had a little cooking. Did they like it? So well, they did. They did like it. But she makes really healthy treats. Oh, so they were like, where are the Twinkies? Where's the butter? <laughs> right. And One of the ingredients. Like... She's vegan, I think. So an ingredient that was missing was what, the butter. What, what kind of ingredients did she have? Like cashew butter, <laughs> which isn't butter. Um, but she, I, she's for, amazing. for us, oh, we my love gosh. it. By the way, everything and she, she makes. And she dips it and she dips some of the stuff in glitter. Then, then she put it in the freezer. <laughs> yeah, she did. Because you kind of have to freeze vegan stuff, I think. Oh, okay. But anyway, I'm going to try one of her dates and one of yours. Okay, and you'll I will see. Be. You'll see. Okay. I think, you know, I think you'll. delighted audiences for generations, the heart and soul of New York City. To have that taken away completely for 18 months was um, horrible. Then when the pandemic hit, the unthinkable, the applause silenced, the lights turned out. You know, we've all been fighting to get back on stage. Now the curtain rises once again. Getting to stand on these stages in front of a thousand or two thousand people and it's singular, right? A celebration while also remembering those we lost. You hold him very near and dear to the life of the show and, and that will live in every production of Waitress. The hottest shows, the biggest stars, and even some pie. What's in the Welcome Back to Broadway pie? Pfizer, <laughs> a mask, and um, a little joy. Join us for the return to Broadway. Thanks for joining us. I'm Joe Fryer. Broadway's return truly is a reflection of the times. For the audience, masks and vaccines are required while kids under 12 need a negative COVID test. Important precautions for an industry that, according to the Broadway League, grossed $1.8 billion at the box office during its last full season. This season, Broadway lovers will have plenty of shows to choose from. In September alone, 15 productions plan to start performances again. One of those, Waitress, already open, with the show's songwriter Sarah Bareilles back in the lead role. She gave us a tour of their new home, the Barrymore Theater. Welcome back to Broadway Pie. That's that's it right there, right? Joe. What, what's, <laughs> what's in the Welcome Back to Broadway Pie? Um. Pfizer, <laughs> a mask, and um, a little joy. The changes on the set of Waitress are subtle. The vinyl's a little more red. It's, this is updated. It's so, almost like a paint almost. Yeah, there's some, um, we've made some changes. But for the most part, this stage is as familiar and as comforting as a homemade pie. How does it feel to be back on a Broadway stage? I mean, it's been so many things. It's been so intense, deeply emotional, very surreal, completely exciting and joyful. And then I cannot get over how quickly it starts to feel just like, we're back. I know it's cliche to say it's like riding a bike, but was it in some way like you just picked right up where you left it's off? It's like riding a bike with a mask, being vaccinated. You know what I mean? It's just like that. For you, was it a relief to know everyone has to be vaccinated? Yes. 
A thousand percent. To me, I just feel like this is a no-brainer. We want to, we're, we're a progressive industry and this, we have to like hold these high standards. And they really, Broadway really took a leadership role in They saying, really did. I'm very, very proud to be a part of that. We do the best we can, we do it again. Why was it so important for you to come back to this role for this return to Broadway? Well, anytime I get the opportunity to play in the world of Waitress, it's really hard for me to say no. It is the great love of my artistic life. It has changed everything about my life in every way, shape, and form. It's gonna be a sob fest for me. I'm like, good luck getting through the curtain rising. I'll be crying from moment one. I'm so happy to be here. For those who haven't been here, they should understand it is a sensory experience, right? It sure is, yeah. That's one of the, the great discoveries early on. We bake a pie, we bake an actual pie. Like this one. It's not this one, but this one looks really good. Let me tell you, props department. Come on, come on, props. Now you do have to sing while sifting flour, right? I mean, is that hard? Yeah, there's a lot of, it's, this is a, this is a props extravaganza, this show. This show is built on the coffee cupping and the menu folding. There was that video that showed the first time you and the cast got together, yeah. rehearsing for the first time. I mean, what, what was that moment like? I was like, what do I say? When do I sing what? I'm singing other people's lines. I'm like, oh right, that's, I don't do that. Um, You're like, I wrote this. Yeah, I, should, I yeah. know, I should know this, shouldn't I? <laughs> um, I mean, it was so much fun to get to be in the room with, with some of my nearest and dearest. It's just, it felt like a miracle, you know, to have this opportunity. I think the theater district at large is just so, we're all so hungry to be back at work, I've been thinking a lot and talking a lot about the fact that we were sort of categorized as non-essential, which I understand in the context of when that happened, but when you think about the importance of the arts and what, what it does for people, for our humanity um, collectively, it is completely essential. For the waitress family, the pandemic has been deeply personal. Actor Nick Cordero originated the role of Earl when the show debuted in 2016. Last year, he died after a lengthy battle with COVID. Nick was a beloved company member, deeply kind, deeply talented, had a big life here. And I don't think any of us were prepared for the fact that he didn't survive. I think we were all like, this is going to be a success story. Now, as Broadway reopens, they're paying tribute. Look closely on the stage. There's a tribute. This is a tribute to our dear Nick Cordero. Our first pie on the board is a big old slice of live your life pie. And that is a song he wrote. And so he lives inside our, our little show forever and ever. What do you think people have learned, especially in the Broadway community, over the last 18 months of just being really robbed of this. Is there a takeaway, something we should learn from it? It's just, it's a miracle to get to make art with each other. And so to be without it for such a long time, I think everybody really was reminded of why we're here in the first place. Um, you know, people really struggled. Some people had to leave the business completely. They couldn't make it work. It's, it's a desperate, it's a desperate time. So. We get excited to be able to share these little pockets of hope, like we're coming back. This is what it feels like. You know, it sparks the, the idea that it's possible. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So. It's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. 
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. On the same night Waitress opened just one block away, another hit musical made its return. Hades Town, which won the Tony for Best Musical in 2019. I sat down with one of the show's stars, two-time Tony nominee Eva Noblezada. How does it feel to be back? Terrifyingly tired and tremendously terrific. Mostly good stuff, right? Oh, very good. Very good. How much did you miss it? <laughs> Having a job? <laughs> I missed it a lot. A lot of performers have been performing for years, like decades and a long, long time. So to have that taken away completely for 18 months was um, horrible. What went through your mind when you would see just Broadway quiet, the marquee's dark? Did you get a chance to see that? Yeah. It was weird, because we um, walked through Times Square one day and we were like, what the heck is going on? It was very strange. It was something that we were trying to stay calm because we needed to be safe. At the same time, I, I kept saying, I refuse to accept this as the new normal. I refuse. This cannot be how we are supposed to continue living our lives. Mm -mm. So what got you through? Oh, God, hope and a full glass of gin. <laughs> a lot of faith. Um, memories, I know that's cheesy, but the, the remembrance of how f fulfilling theater is and being surrounded by theaters, I went, I must be here for a reason. So when you found out Broadway was coming back, what was the first thing you thought? I said, my bank account is thirsty, girl. Um, so I was, of course, just thrilled because that meant that not only me, but the people I cared about that are also integral parts of putting on a show would have a job again. I hear the walls repeating. Falling on my feet. She spent the lockdown with Reeve Carney, a co-star on stage and partner off stage. So you spent a lot of time together at work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you spent a lot of time together at home during the it's pandemic. It's great. How was that for you both being together all the time during that? Honestly, we had the best time. And now you're both together and returning to the show together. Yeah. How's that? I love how shocked you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's great. It's work. It's not just Reeve. So much of the cast is back. What does that yeah. mean to you? It's family. It's like a family reunion, except we get paid to make you know, make jokes and have fun and tell this incredible story of Aeneas Mitchell's prophetic poetry. The first rehearsal, what was that like? We had a, a nice few hours of actually sitting with each other, telling each other a grief and a joy, just the cast. So that was a good way to not only catch us up on what each of us were feeling, but it was almost like a collective breath of like, let's ride this pony all the way home. I have to imagine the first time you sing together again, too. That must have been an experience. Yeah, we actually um, did a sing through that day. And I was like, you're kidding, right? I don't know this show like I don't know algebra. I was like, this is crazy. But then once you start, you're like, oh, it's in my body already. Shake, 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 the fact that Broadway is returning, mm. this is a musical about renewal, does that seem Absolutely, it, it, it is hand in hand. The movements that we've seen and the things that we've seen on TV, even if they've been horrible to witness, 
We've all learned something as individuals. We've all grown, we've all changed, we've all matured as individuals. So the show is about using those lessons into making something good, how, seeing how the world could be. What do you think it's gonna be like when you're standing on that stage and you look and there's an audience out there? Maybe wearing masks, but there's an audience. It's gonna be wonderful because we know how excited the audience is. I hope they know how excited we are too because it's just gonna be, it's gonna be actually crazy, I think. Chaotic in the best way. Still to come on the return to Broadway, seven plays this season were written by black playwrights. We'll take a closer look at that. Plus, we'll be joined by Broadway legend Brian Stokes Mitchell. Stay with us. Good morning, welcome to today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. A couple Broadway shows actually hit the stage before September, and one of them, the play Passover, is ushering in what many hope is a new era for Broadway. NBC News Now anchor Aaron Gilchrist shows us how. Antoinette Chinoy Nwandu is the writer behind one of seven plays premiering on Broadway this season, and all seven of those new plays are written by black playwrights. You know, I really take that seriously because the moment is histor so historic and the because the moment is so precious, because I really want you to experience what it feels like to be in the theater again and what it feels like to tell a story that helps you remember Oh wait, the United States of America as an idea is a pretty cool idea. After protests swept the country last year in the wake of George Floyd's murder, many in the theater community wanted to use their voice for change. Cody Renard Richard is Passover's stage manager. We're living in a time where people are being very aware of their actions and being very aware of what um, they produce and what we see. So I do think this season is a direct result of all the things that that we spoke about and fought for. Passover is the story of two young black men, friends, who over the course of two evenings have two different encounters with two different white men. Nuandu actually rewrote the play's ending following George Floyd's death. In the new version, the character Moses, played by John Michael Hall, is no longer killed on stage by a white man. We've seen black people killed on camera a lot. And um, I don't think she wanted to put that trauma out there for black audiences, audience members. Uh, again, she wanted to find a more hopeful, yet something that warns us as a country to continue to self-investigate and try to be better. Also in this historic season is the comedy Chicken and Biscuits, which opens on September 23rd. It's the Broadway playwriting debut of Douglas Lyons, who hopes to use the power of laughter to connect with his audiences. Chicken and Biscuits is a classic comedy, and it's a black family, but you will enjoy yourself. It is 
human, it's universal. And I think if we stop focusing so much on only what we see and the heartbeats of the characters, we can all feel what we need to feel from a story. And just as Nuwandu transformed the end of Passover to reflect current events, these artists are hopeful that the theater industry is also creating a new story for its next act. I think we should take this moment that we have and make it as great as we can, but we won't know for a little while if theater is really making the change it says it wants to make. And there are others who are trying to make that change. There's a, a coalition of theater owners, producers, and other Broadway power brokers who recently signed a pact. It's called the New Deal for Broadway. And the goal here really is to push for more diversity and more inclusion. There'll be things that are part of this deal, like no more all-white creative teams. Uh, there's going to be an effort to rename theaters for black artists. And, Joe, I think what some of us will see maybe uh, perhaps in a larger audience, the Tony Awards, there's an effort with the Tonys to try to create more rules for diversity. Uh, in that production. This is something a lot of folks in Broadway are talking about, so thank you, Aaron. And we do want to keep the conversation going right now. As you just heard, all seven new plays this season are written by black playwrights, but that hasn't always been the case. Just a few years ago, in the 2018-2019 season, 89% of show writers and over 93% of directors were white. Joining me now to discuss this and more changes coming to Broadway is Felicia Fitzpatrick. She's a theater writer and content creator and Tony Award winner and Broadway legend Brian Stokes Mitchell. He's the chairman of the Actors Fund. Thank you both for joining us. Brian, I want to start with you. We just mentioned this new deal for Broadway. It was developed by Black Theater United and includes steps to make Broadway more inclusive. What's the most important part of this diversity pledge? Um, well, I think the most important part is is um, having uh, like uh, equality. Basically, what we were focused on is um, is having the leaders of our theatrical industry commit to a set of reforms on topics of equity and diversity and inclusion and accessibility uh, and belonging across all aspects of our industry. Um, and, and we had did that by convening a summit six months ago with leading figures in the industry from five major categories. There were theater owners, producers, unions, and what we call creatives, which include directors, choreographers, designers, casting directors, composers, and playwrights. Um, and uh, so everybody has started the work now and signing on to this uh, document, which has been fantastic. As, as Daniel uh, J. Watts, actor from uh, Tina, uh, so eloquently put it, he said, uh, Broadway can't come back. It has to come forward. And this uh, document will help do that. That's a good way to put that. I mean, Felicia, how important are these efforts? Do you think Broadway will sustain this kind of diversity going forward? I mean, I certainly hope we continue the momentum. And I think it's so important that it's not just representation on stage, right? The inclusion, the equity need to be throughout the whole ecosystem of theater. And it has to be intentional and it has to be consistent. Because I know I've heard from so many black theater makers talk about it on a podcast I host called Call and Response, which is about the intersection of blackness and performing arts. And I've experienced it myself where you're one of two black people in the room and you see each other and you give each other like the look. And we don't, it needs to be more than that. We we need to have black wig designers. We need to have black company managers, producers, journalists, social media managers, right? So everyone can feel safe and comfortable in these spaces. And I think what's so effective about the New Deal is that it brings more than conversations. It's it's like tangible action steps, and it can establish you know industry wide standards. I want to shift now to COVID. Brian, you're a Broadway legend. You're also the chairman of the Actors Fund. Since the pandemic began, the organization has distributed more than $21 million in emergency assistance to people in the industry. Help us understand just how challenging have these last 18 months been for Broadway actors and others who work on Broadway? Oh, this this has been a time like no other. Um, I'm I'm right now serving my my final year. I think I'm 16 years now as the board chair, and I don't think we've ever ever in my memory, uh, and probably in the history of the fund, uh, nearly 140 years, had uh, a year like we just had. It's been especially challenging because when people think of a show business, people in show business, they think of big actors like Denzel Washington or Tom Hanks or Angelina Jolie or other performers who make large pay, paychecks. But that's not most people in our industry. Most people 
are gig workers that are going from job to job. And the Actors Fund, of course, serves all working professionals in entertainment and the performing arts. Um, you talked about our, our emergency assistance fund. Normally, uh, we've given actually out, uh, I think, more than $23 million to more than 16,000 people. In a normal year, that would be uh, about $2 million to 1,500 people. Um, but we have a whole lot of other pro uh, programs as well. We have health insurance counseling that it's enabled people to ensure secure insurance, which has been a challenge, and sustain good health. We have a, a Friedman Health Care Center as well uh, in uh, in Times Square. So it's got a long tail, this pandemic, and, and we're going to stay in it for the long run. So much help is needed. You know, Felicia, as we've mentioned throughout this special, audience members are going to have to be fully vaccinated and masked to get into the theater. I mean, from what you can tell, how are fans feeling about that? Are they excited to get back? Are they a little nervous? I mean, I have already seen waves of the classic, you know, taking a photo of the playbill and posting it on your Instagram while you're about to see a show. Uh, I've seen it yeah, on Twitter, Instagram, all the social media. So I think fans are definitely excited to get back into those theaters. And, you know, if they're going to the theaters, they know the mandates in place and they're going to be willing to follow those protocols because they want to do whatever it takes to keep the performers, their fellow audience members and, and other theater employees safe because they know it's not just entertainment. These are people livelihoods, right? And and I think the other thing I've been seeing too, honestly, on social media is that theater fans are not just in New York City. They're across the country. So they want to make sure that we're still going to have those streaming options that have kind of popped up in the last 18 months um, so they can still engage with it no matter where they live. Very quickly, Brian, what are you looking forward to most now that Broadway's coming back? You know what, if I can, I want to be at every opening night. That's what I'm looking forward to, is sharing armrests with strangers without fear and getting back to it and cheering and crying together and laughing together and celebrating Broadway and the arts together. Sounds great. Felicia, Brian, thank you both so very, very much for joining us. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Coming up, the Tony Awards are just around the corner. We're going to chat with Moulin Rouge star Aaron Tveit, the only nominee in his category, but that doesn't guarantee victory. We're going to explain next. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to you today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Tony Awards will finally take place September 26, two nights before that, Moulin Rouge the Musical opens. The show scored 14 Tony nominations, and its star, Aaron Tveit, is the only nominee for lead actor in a musical. I chatted with him about that, and the show is returned. It feels very fresh, you know, it feels like we're, we're putting on kind of the Broadway 2.0 production of Moulin Rouge. I mean, do you see this show in sort of a different light after everything we've gone through? Yeah, that's, that's really interesting because this show at its core is about a group of artists kind of fighting for the opportunity to uh, practice their art and share their art. You know, we've all been fighting to get back on stage and to get back to work, so that has a very new thing. And, and also, I mean, we have a, a woman struggling with consumption on stage and coughing, you know, while 
while, while her health is failing. So I think that might take a, a new meaning to our audience, kind of sitting and watching what, what that means to, to watch someone going through that. When this all shut down in 2020, no one really knew what was going on, yeah. but you were among the first to actually find out you had COVID. Yes, yes. I, I, I like to think that ignorance was bliss a little bit. You know, I think if I knew what I knew now about COVID, I would have been much more uh, scared and worried. Uh, I was super lucky that I had a, I think a mild case even as it goes. You've been able to do some TV shows, but can anything really compete with a Broadway stage? No, you know, it's uh, television's great and movies are great, but getting to stand on these stages in front of a thousand or two thousand people and it's it's so hard, you know what I mean? It's so hard to do it every night, but the response and the, the, the it's singular, right? What, what happens one night is different from the next night, and you just you, you're sharing that with all those people, and to hear that group of people laugh or cry or celebrate, or you know, it's like it, 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 you know, I'm, I'm getting my, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. Yeah, it's just it, it's like nothing else. So it's uh, it's something you chase when you don't have it. <laughs> A couple nights after you open, the yes. Tony Awards are finally happening. Yes, it's all happening at the same time, yes. <laughs> you guys are up for 14 awards, yes. you're up for lead actor. You're the only one nominated. I am, That's yeah. an interesting situation, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's, uh, it's a very unique situation, but uh, I've just tried to think of it as what it is, and it's so meaningful to me, and this is the first time I've been nominated in my career, and I'm just so grateful for the recognition and that our show has gotten so much notice. I mean, the Tonys usually give Broadway a pretty big boost, yeah, don't they? Yeah. And you probably never needed that more than ever, right? Totally. I think, you know, the, the Tonys hopefully are the best commercial for Broadway ever. And I think this year, more than ever, we need that. So I hope that they're just a wonderful celebration and can welcome everyone back to the theater. I have to ask, with your category, which you know some people don't know, you have to get 60% of the vote. Does, yes, does that that's right. There's still a part of you that's, that's right, a that's little right. nervous. No, of course. You know, everyone's been wonderfully gracious in saying early congratulations. And I, I, I truly appreciate it. But again, it's like, yes, there's been a, a vote. And I have to get 60%. But I've also said that's only a D, right? I basically only need a D. So hopefully that works out. But no, no, it's, 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 it's wonderful. <laughs> You'll have that speech ready. Yeah, exactly. I'm Dylan Dreyer, and today we're working out with Marcia from Obey Fitness. She's teaching us Pilates to help strengthen our abs and our legs. So roll out that mat and let's get moving. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> <laughs> Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. What's up, fam? It's your girl, Marcia. I'm here from Obey Fitness. We're together to do a 10-minute workout, Pilates abs. You don't need anything. You, me, gravity, roll out your magic carpet. Let's get down to business. Take a seat, right? Knees bent, feet flat, hands get tucked into the knee creases. You're gonna rock it back or roll it back. Let's do that. Let's roll it back, keep it nice and smooth. And then you're gonna pull those elbows right to the side. Again, just like that, scooping my waist, rolling it. Smooth, smooth operator. There it is, elbows wide to the side. Stay in your abs. One more time, take it back. 
and then bring it home. Here comes the level up. The hands come in towards your sternum. I want you to roll it back. Oh, yes. And then rock it up. Exactly. Adding breath here. Inhale, it goes back. And then exhale, it comes up. Now, if you want more challenge, you walk those heels a little bit closer to your bum. Ooh, and then you'll feel it, okay? Now, here's the deal. I want you to roll it back and hold it here. You're going to spiral over to your right side and then bring it back to your center. Again, like that, to your right side. Ooh, and then bring it back to your center. You got three more just like that. Making sure the hands stay in line with the heart so the hands are not going on a mission on their own, right? It's like together, together, no matter the weather, okay? So now I want you to come on over to your right side and stay here. Things are starting to burn, that's A, okay. I want you to go back an inch and come up an inch. Go back an inch and up an inch. So you're right where the work is, all the way clocked in, okay? Water breaks are allowed, honey, but nobody's going home. Show me the last two. Not yet, because we got things to do. Last and final one, I want you to take it back there, go ahead, square yourself, and then bring it all the way home. Same deal, other side. I want you to round it back, hold it there. You find your edge, you own it. And then you're gonna spiral over towards your left side, and then bring it back home. So again, I'm checking in that my knees are not trying to get all shifty on me, because a shifty knee, honey, she's unreliable. You need those knees to be reliable, honey. A steady force. Go ahead, spiral over and stay there. Back an inch, up an inch. You know what to do if you want more challenge, the heels come closer to your butt. If you need less, walk the heels further away, right? You gauge it for yourself, but you stay at the job, honey. We got two more. Yes, last and final, one more. Square it forward. I want you to extend the legs, flex through all 10 toes. Extend the arms, and with control, darling, control. Roll all the way down into the mat. For the full roll up, arms up towards the ceiling. Take an inhale, you're gonna roll it up. And then exhale, round it forward. Now take note how we pass through the half roll down. Here it is right here. Remember the knees are no longer bent, they're straight, but this is that moment. Okay, so it's like going through a toe, right? Inhale, you're up. Exhale forward. I say it's like pass and go and collecting $200, right? So by the end of this, you're all stacked up, coins on coins, ready, ready, ready with your money. Hold it there as long as you're passing through that toll. Now, if you miss it, right, it's probably because your abs aren't scooped, right, or you're not reaching. So I need you to do both. The abs are going to pull you back. The fingertips are going to reach you forward. We reach forward for what? Our goals, our dreams, all the things that we want. We don't reach back, honey. No, we don't. Okay, last and final one. I want you to reach it forward, hold it forward, pulse it forward for three, pulse forward for two, pulse forward for one. I want you to take an inhale, start rolling it, rolling it, rolling it back. One bone at a time until you land on the mat, and when you do, stay down. Now, if you need to recenter yourself, recenter yourself. Make it happen, keep it cute. I want you to bring those legs into your tabletop position, lift the arms up, curl up to the tips of your shoulder blades, and for the hundred, y'all, we're gonna do about 50 of them, but it's happening. I want you to take an inhale, two, three, four, five, Five, exhale two, three, four, five. Inhale two, three, four, five. Exhale two, three, four, five. Friends, this is real air coming into your lungs and real air leaving your lungs, okay? Every single time. Take one more deep breath in and a deep breath out. Hold it here for the single leg stretch. Right leg pulls in, grab that shin. Left leg's going out on the high diagonal. Now that's an active leg, make sure that's true. Go ahead, switch sides. Boom, and then switch. That's it, and then switch. Who says you can't do a lot of work in a little bit of time? Y'all, this is deep, mindful stuff. So if you only got 10 minutes, the future is a snack bite. So don't sweat the small stuff, right? Take your little bit of time, take your whole lot of effort, and make some magic happen. Come on, we got two more. Exhale, exhale, last one. That's it, blow the air all the way out, bend the knees in, lower your head. I want you to go ahead and stack both hands behind your head. Some of y'all like to use the jazz fingers, but unfortunately, they're not gonna support you for this. So go ahead and make a real stack, okay? Listen, I'm not mad at a little jazz hand, but we'll save it for later, all right? On that note, knees are in your tabletop, curl it up, all right? Don't close, don't close it on your head. You wanna keep those elbows nice and wide. Send the legs out on the high diagonal, they're strong and straight. Flex through your feet. Point through your toes and then bend it in. Again, you're gonna send it out, flex, point, and bend it in. You got three more just like that. If you want more challenge, you take the legs a little bit lower. The problem is, or the, goal, the thing is, you don't wanna go so low that you get an arch in your spine. You wanna keep those abs in so that the spine stays connected, okay? So buyer beware, that's you. Checking out the scene, making sure. All right, last and final one. Go ahead, flex 
and then point. Now keep the legs pointed, right leg lifts up. Go ahead, grab it for your scissors, that's it. Left leg's gonna find 45 degrees or a little bit lower, but this is an active leg. Don't let it be like, ooh, inactive, honey. Activate her, she wants to do the job. And then you'll switch sides. That's it, switch sides. Keep going, now my eyes are on my abs. Yes, it's easy to look up at your feet and be like, oh, pedicure, I love you so much, but I want you to look at your abs, right? And make sure they're doing what they need to be doing, okay? Elbows are wide, abs are pulling in deep. Show me four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one, bend those knees in. You're going back to having your hands stacked behind your head. I want you to curl it up, extend the legs up, externally rotate them, heels are together, toes are apart. Go ahead, lower the legs down to 45 degrees. Open them to the width of the mat. Pull them together and then take three counts to lift them up. Wow, again, just like that. Lower, open, zip, and then lift, lift, lift. It's like Dear Diary, why are my legs so heavy? Don't worry about it, keep them working. Yes, a long working leg is a lighter leg, okay? If the leg becomes dead weight, then yeah, it's gonna feel a lot heavier than it should. Okay, we got two more. Stay with it, fam. Lower, open, zip, lift, 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 last and final, see? Anything for a little while. Lift it, lift it, lift it. Bend the knees in and lower your head. Last but not least, we got crisscross. It's for those internal and external obliques so we can feel fabulous all of the time. Go ahead, the legs are coming into tabletop. Curl it up. Left leg stays in tabletop, right leg goes out on the high diagonal. Come on up and over. Hey, and then it's your other side. Yep, it's your other side, come on. Now my legs are holding their place in the center. My body is wrapping around itself. Ooh, deep work, you guys. Little bit of time, whole lot of effort, whole lot of benefits. Come on, we got three, three. You got two, two. You got one and one. I want you to bend those knees in and rest. Last but not least, friends, we're gonna go into a little teaser, right? Ooh, don't be afraid. Here you go, hands go in the knee creases. Keep your legs zipped together. I want you to rock on up to sit. Now, once you get seated, Bring your legs into a tabletop position. So this is gonna be our home base, all right? Call it home. Hold it here for three, hold it two. I'm lifting my chest up for one, and then I'm gonna roll it down. And I'm gonna rock it right back up. Lifting my chest, that is the name of the game, y'all. Lift it up. Three, two, one. Again, I'm gonna roll it back, and then I'm gonna rock it up and lift it up. Hold it up, three. Holding two, holding one. Now here's the deal, you can stick with this version, or you add a little spice to your life. Check it out, no hands. All right, now my legs are gonna stay, my body's gonna roll down. All right, I'm gonna curl my chin to my chest, reach myself up, and this time, extend my legs. If you cannot straighten your legs, keep your knees bent. I'm not gonna take away any of your cool points, trust me. Otherwise, here we are, three, two, one. The knees are gonna bend, the body's gonna roll back down. I got two more, okay? The magic number here is three. It's nice to know what the magic numbers are, right? You're like, ooh, how much longer we got to go? We got one more, okay, here it is. Reach it all the way up, hold it up. You got three, you got two, you got one. Now the legs are gonna stay strong and straight. The body is gonna roll itself down. Legs are staying, arms are staying. Curl up into yourself. You got three, two, one. You're gonna lower yourself back down. Two more, lift it up, hold it up. Keep it up, ow. Lower all the way back down, last and final. Lift it all the way up and hold it up. Leave the legs, melt the body into the mat, and for the end of your 100, vigorously pump as you inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five. If you need less, you bring your legs in the tabletop, okay? You can also lift your legs a little higher towards the ceiling. Wherever you are, two more giant breaths, inhale, and exhale, stay with me, family, inhale. And exhale, two, three, four, five. Go ahead, bend those knees in. I want you to rock on up to sit. Once you're seated, cross over your legs. Come into a quadruped position. I want you to tuck your knees, hover it up for three, hover it up for two, hover it up for one. Go ahead, press those legs strong and straight into your downward facing dog. Walk your fingertips all the way back towards your toes. Soften the knees and then roll up through the spine, stacking those bones up nice and tall. And when you make it to the top, your top. Remember to stand tall and stay tall until we're together again. Thank you, fam. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. Oh. That's just 
Shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. That's good. Shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> <laughs> What's up, fam? It's your girl, Marcia. I'm here from Obey Fitness. We are together to do a 10-minute workout, Pilates legs. You don't need anything. It's you, it's me, it's gravity. You're going to roll out your magic carpet, and we're getting down to business. Take a seat, friends. Once you're seated, I want you to lie down on your mat on your side. So your side line, your elbow, your shoulder, and your hip are going to align with the back edge of the mat. I want your knees to bend, right? So you're like a letter L here. Your shins are flush with the front edge of the mat. Okay, and then this top hand is gonna be six inches in front of your chest. Go ahead, you're gonna lift this leg up and then lower it right back down, but just come to a hover, right? Again, you're gonna lift and then you're gonna lower. Keep going. Now, as I lift my leg, I'm not rotating it, right? It's easy to get this knee to look up at the ceiling, but I wanted to maintain the, the, the look at front, okay? Amazing, keep going. Now, I'm pressing up with my thigh outer thigh, and I'm pulling in with my inner thigh. That's it. Show me the last two. Great, last and final one. Amazing, I want you to hold it up here and keep it up here. Now I'm gonna internally rotate that leg, knee to knee, and then externally rotate the leg toe to toe. My toes are actually gonna press together. Again, knee to knee, and then toe to toe. And you're probably wondering, but Marmar, why should we press our toes? Because it gets you right to where the magic is happening. It's like, oop, activate, boop, and you're gonna start to feel that little muscle starting to cook up. It's a good, it should, look, it's a good feeling. <laughs> Give or take, right? It's a bird, it's a sweet bird, right? Keep going. So, I'm pressing, right? I'm internally rotating and then I'm externally rotating. I got two more of these. Uh-huh, and then last and final. Now I'm gonna keep my toes pressing together. And I'm gonna pulse this knee back, like I'm pressing up against the wall, and I'm trying to push that wall out of my way, because the wall doesn't want me to be great. And I'm like, you're not gonna get me, honey. I got things to do, I got goals, okay? And all of them involve greatness, darling, so out of my way. Keep going, you got four more. You got three more. Show me two more. Show me one more, now hold it here. I want you to keep this leg externally rotated and lift it up like you're pulling it behind your shoulder, right? And then again, you're gonna tap those toes back together. Again, lift this leg, pull it behind your shoulder, that's the intention, right? Yes, your legs have to have intentions. Otherwise, they might come out here doing all the kinds of crazy things. And again, you wanna be centered, you wanna be focused on what is going on, right? And of course, the why. It's like, what is it, why? Show me the last two. Uh-huh, here it is. Show me the last one. Now here's the deal, you're gonna pull that knee behind you as you did, and you're gonna pulse it back there for eight. Pulse it back for seven. Try not to let the knee roll forward or back. Just keep it in that lane. Right, the realm of the reasonable. Show it to me, we got three, we got two, we got one, hold it here. Now I want you to bring this leg so it's in line with the other leg, nice and stacked up. You're gonna straighten the leg out underneath you. You're gonna sweep it to the front, and then you're gonna brush it to the back. Again, sweep it to the front, 
and then brush it to the back. So that knee, that leg, excuse me, is cruising at hip height. Yes, it's not lower, it's not higher, it's just right in that groove. Imagine you're kind of sliding that leg across a coffee table, right? And you're like, you gotta get that remote control. So you're like, ooh, child, nobody else in the room, it's just you. So your toes, you're like, listen, I hired you guys to do a job. I need you to get me that, that remote control. So you reach across that table, show me two more. You got two more chances to get that remote control or you're gonna be stuck watching the same show. <laughs> Last and final one. I want you to pull it in front of you and hold it in front of you. Now here's where the magic happens. You're gonna flex, you're gonna point, you're gonna lower, you're gonna lift. Again, flex and point. That's right, lower down and lift it up. Now every time you lower, the leg is not actually resting on the other leg, nor is the leg resting on the floor. The leg is completely focused on working. That's it. Show me two more. I know, things are starting to cook up. It's okay, last and final one more. I want you to hold it up here. Now circle out like you're tracing a golf ball. Small, small, small. Yes. Uh-huh, keep going. Yes, the leg is long, the hips are stacked. Show me three, show me two, show me one. We're taking that in reverse, come on. And seven, yes, for six. Abs are still pulling in, tailbone reaches long. Last three, last two, last and final one. That leg is cooked, bend that knee, lower it down. Press yourself on up. And friends, we're gonna swing our legs around and get right into the other side. 10 minutes, it's a little bit of time, right? But who says we can't get the maximum result in 10 minutes? Go on, lift that leg up and then lower the leg down. Uh -huh. Now the leg comes down again to a hover. So it's not actually touching that other thigh. Why? Because you want this leg to develop some sort of independence, right? Why are you always leaning on this leg to get through life? Honey, empower yourself to do what you gotta do. Show it to me, we got three more. That's it, show me two more. My abs are still working, dare I say. Ooh. Last and final, one more. Now here it comes, internally rotated knee to knee. Externally rotated toe to toe and they're gonna press. Imagine if you have those snapping buttons. I want you to snap those guys together and you gotta hear that snap. Mmm, it's like, here it is, oh snap, uh-huh. And the booty's like, oh snap, yes. That is what we're going for. Keep it rocking. We got three. We have two. Abs are still in and up. Yes, they are. Last and final one. Now the toes are gonna press together, they're gonna stay together. I want you to pulse that knee back. Eight, seven, remember the goal is greatness. Six and five, and you are not taking no for an answer. No, we are not. Last four, last three, last and final two, and one, hold it here. Now pull that knee behind your shoulder. Boom, and then again, oh snap. <laughs> again, pull it behind you, and there you go. Boop, show me six more. It's like, oh, give me a count. This way I know when it's almost over, darling. We're still breathing, we're still smiling. Life is still cute, honey, we're still cute. Show me the last two. Almost there, family. Last and final one. Now I want you to pull that knee behind you. Keep it there. Pulse it behind you. Eight and seven. You got it for six and five. Try to keep the shape of the leg the same. Last two. Last and final one. Now go ahead, stack these legs. And then I want you to extend that leg underneath you. And then you'll sweep it to the front. Underneath you, it reaches, and then you sweep it to the front. Now as you sweep to the front, again, the tailbone stays long. The butt's gonna maybe wanna curl under like a scared dog when they're hiding their tail, right? But you gotta keep that tailbone nice and long. Last two, nice, nice. Last and final one, hold it here. Now you're gonna flex, and then you're gonna point. Uh-huh, again, you're gonna flex. Did you get the remote control is the question. Or are you still watching that tired show that doesn't have the good jokes, right? <laughs> Last two. Here it is, last and final one. All right, now you're gonna lower the leg down and you're gonna lift the leg up. Ooh, again, lower, I know, the leg is like, I'm over it. Dear Marmar, I'm over it. Stay with me, okay, stay with me. Keep smiling, keep doing what you gotta do, right? We have three more, ooh, we've got two more. I know, last and final, one more. Take an inhale, own your strength, exhale, that's it. As you are, roll over onto your stomach. Make a quick little pillow for the forehead and then glue it down. Right leg's gonna lift away from the mat. And then you're gonna put it right back down. Again, you're gonna lift it away from the mat and put it right back down. Last and final time, lift away, keep away. Without dropping the knee, bend the knee 
and then straighten your leg. Ooh, this is for your hamstrings. Why not give them an opportunity to get stronger? That's it, last and final one. Straighten the leg all the way out, keep it out. Now pulse that leg up. This is your end, eight, seven, six, five. Both of my hips are anchored. Yes, my abs are still pulling in and up. Hamstring is on fire in a good way. Last two, last and final one. Lower all the way down, same deal, other side. Go on, lift that leg up and then lower the leg down. Now when the leg comes down, it's just to a hover, y'all. Y'all know what we're doing? We're empowering that leg to have strength. That's it, show me the last three. Last two. Last and final one, now lift that leg, hold it up there. I want you to bend that knee, and then extend the leg. That's it, bend, and then extend. Last and final time, bend, and extend. Hold it up there, go ahead, pulse it up. Yes, pulsing from the hamstring. That's where the strength is at. You got three, you got two, you got one, you're gonna lower the leg all the way down. Friends, press yourself back to a nice little seated position. Your legs are cooked. Thanks so much for joining me. 10 minutes, not a lot of time, but a whole lot of action can happen. Until the next time. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So. It's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What's up, fam? It's your girl, Marcia. I'm here from Obey Fitness. We have five minutes, you guys, to hit it and get it in a cute little stretch. Roll out your magic carpet, and that's it. Let's take a seat. Once you're seated, I want you to open your legs up as wide as they'll go for you today, right? No pressure, just as wide as they'll go. Just make sure that all 10 toes are up towards the ceiling and your knees are also looking up at the ceiling. Lift yourself up into the letter T. T is for tall, so let's make it happen. And then I want you to go on over to your left side. Start there and then put the arm in the ear so that they're one. And then let gravity do what gravity does and own it with your reach. So my reach is going over, over, over. Again, you're going with where your reach is gonna take you, okay? And wherever that is, again, gravity's got your back. It's working with you to get you a little bit further, further, further. Now, if it's available to you, take this bottom arm, thread it underneath. Right, so now it's gonna reach in the opposite direction and that's gonna deepen the stretch on your side body. We got one more breath here. Great, and then as you exhale, we're bringing everything down the center. So I'm pivoting my body towards my leg. You're gonna grab wherever you can grab. If it's your ankle, if it's your calf, if it's your knee, you go where you can go. Double check that this little hip over here stays down though, cause it might wanna misbehave and pop up. Take an inhale here, and as you exhale, I want you to pull the elbows down towards your mat and pull your heart forward. Hold it there, three, holding two, holding one, and then lower your nose down towards your knee, your forehead towards your shin, crown of your head's gonna reach towards the ground. We got one more breath here, and then I simply want you to roll on up to sit. Other side, find your letter T, start tall, and then go over there, right? So I pull my arm and my ear together, and I'm reaching for my right side, and I'm going, and I'm going, and I'm going as far as I can go. And when I get there, trust, I'm still reaching to go a little bit further than that. Right? Not because I'm ungrateful, but because I know the possibility. If you keep reaching, honey, things are gonna happen for you. Now take this bottom arm, reach it in that position. Right? If that's not available to you, keep that bottom arm exactly where it was. Yep, you're deepening that stretch. Hold it here, hold it here. Amazing, and then you're gonna pivot down 
towards this leg. Now, once you get down here, again, check on this misbehaving hip. It wants to pop away from the floor. You see that? You got to square it back and down. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, the elbows come down towards the mat. And I'm going to pull my heart forward. That's going to deepen the stretch across the backside of the legs. It's also getting into a little bit of this back body, which is great after sitting all day. Oh, what a sweet release. And then lower your nose, your forehead, the crown of your head all towards the ground. And then you're going to roll yourself right on back up. Walk those hands down the center. Now you're going to walk as far as you can go. All right, once the knees are still looking up at the ceiling, right, and the toes are still looking up at the ceiling, then you're in the realm of the reasonable. If the things start to roll down, you're going to want to back it up just a little bit. And if you want, you can always, you know, prop it up. This is a great way to watch TV. Can we talk? <laughs> Now, if it's available to you, I want you to press your hands into your legs, and that's gonna help them to stretch even a little deeper and lower your heart down towards the floor. Take an inhale, take an exhale, roll it all the way up. I want you to bounce those legs closed. Now, as you are, you're gonna cross your legs, and then your right leg is coming over the left leg. Both cheeks firmly on the mat. I'm sitting up nice and tall. You can either grab your leg and twist into it or take your arm to the opposite side and keep going a little bit deeper. Now, I'm not just twisting and slouching. I'm twisting and lifting. That's the key. Keep it going. Amazing. And then come out of this. We're switching sides. Opposite leg crosses over. Now, whatever you did on the first side, do that on the second side, because you know the goal is always balanced. So with me, I'm going to take my elbow right back to where it was. I'm going to lift, and I'm going to twist. And you know it's a different side of the same body, and I might not get the same results, and that is A-OK, -okay, right? Because my other side is doing its best, honey, and that is good for me. Keep lifting. Amazing. We're bringing it back to the center. I want you to cross these legs. Come on over into a quadruped position. You're going to tuck your toes, pike your hips up into a downward-facing dog, and then walk those toes together. I want you to lift the heels, and as you lower the heels, you're going to lift your abs. Again, lift the heels, lower the heels, and lift the abs. Keep pressing those palms firmly, firmly into the mat. One more time. Lower all the way down. Then you're going to walk your fingertips all the way back towards your toes. And just saying, hang here like a rag doll. Right? Now, if it's available, you can grab your opposite elbows. If that makes you feel crazy, keep your hands on your shins or on the floor so you can feel stable. And then we'll just rock back and forth from side to side and then releasing those fingertips. You're gonna roll up through your spine, stacking those bones one on top of the other until you make it up so that you're standing up nice and tall. And friends, please stay this tall until we see each other again. Thank you so much for joining me. These are places we may not be able to visit for a while. Come with us as we take you there into our incredible world. Thousands of years ago, before the rise of human civilization, the Earth for our ancestors was a very different place. And they too were different. In this episode of Incredible World, we enter a cave in Gibraltar, thought to be the last refuge of the Neanderthal. In Siberia, we unearth the intact bodies of prehistoric mammoths. And in Ireland, we examine the truth behind legends the tale of a race of giants. We learn too how 21st century DNA science is revealing these secrets of our ancestors. But we begin our journey into the past here at the very southern tip of Europe, just 14 miles from the coast of Africa. This in ancient times was known as the end of the world. And it's thought this is the last place that the Neanderthals died out. But why did they disappear? Here in Gibraltar, the Neanderthals who lived in these caves 400 centuries ago might just be your long lost ancestors. This was home for them, probably one of the last homes on the planet. This is just stunning. This was their campfire, as paleontologist Clive Finlayson explains. Neanderthals were sitting all around like we are now. They had a fire here going, and they were having a barbecue. It's probably around 40, 45,000 years ago. This is a time machine. It is. It's the nearest thing we've got to a time machine. 
and what they ate, a Mediterranean diet, it seems. They've got the limpet shells here. And like oysters there. Oysters yeah. on this end. This is a Neanderthal seafood platter. Yeah. You could say that. Yeah, absolutely. This is the remains of the knife that they would have used to prise open the shells. Yeah. We have evidence now that they're even catching dolphins in some way. Birds. People thought birds were difficult to catch. They're catching birds, a whole range, 150 different species of birds in these caves. Though the sea was close back then, the view was very different from today. When they looked out, what they could see were sand dunes, but not like you expect in a desert. These are sand dunes with trees, pine trees, with olive bushes, and then herds of animals, such as the red deer. I mean, it was a lovely place to live. Neanderthals were an ancient people going back some 350,000 years and not at all like the comically brutish way they are often portrayed. Because we think of them as basically pretty primitive. That's right. They had brains as large, in some cases even larger than ours. And these were pretty intelligent guys. They survived on the planet longer than we have but by a long shot. Going deeper into the interior of another cave, Clive shows me something extraordinary. Have a look at this. Perhaps the first cave art, never before filmed. These are marks, it's an engraving. We don't know what it means, but it was done by the hand of the Neanderthal. It looks geometrical, it's almost some people have called it a hashtag <laughs> in modern terms. <laughs> it does look but a little does, bit like it, a hashtag. It, is it art or is it a message? That's the mystery. In fact, recent discoveries made in other Spanish caves confirm that these stalactites were decorated by Neanderthal people 650,000 years ago, making the Neanderthals the first known artists on Earth. So why did they die out? Some experts think we Homo sapiens wiped them out. Others believe that they couldn't adjust to the brutal conditions when the last ice age hit. The world was changing. Climate was becoming much colder, much drier than it had ever been before. Europe was getting covered in ice. And there is a DNA trail suggesting they interbred with us, passing on features like blue eyes and red hair, fair skin and freckles. Among the features we may have inherited, a strange bone some folks, including me, have at the back of their skull. Do I have Neanderthal genes? I've got blue eyes, I've got a bone that's large at the back of my head. I've heard that that could be a sign. It's not conclusive, but there's a strong chance that some of those features that you have, and we all have, are carried over from the Neanderthals. So to find out if I have any Neanderthal DNA, I sent some of my saliva, you don't want to see me do this, to be tested. And the result? Apparently, I am 2.6% Neanderthal, like most humans of European or Asian extraction. So although the Neanderthals died out, in a sense, they still live on, in us. It's really sad to think about these guys living here, not realizing that they are slowly, slowly dying out. One of the fossils that was found in Gibraltar was of a four-year-old child, Neanderthal. And I think that of that child where we are now, and maybe the parents went out hunting, they were the last ones, and those parents never came back. And suddenly you think, oh my God, maybe that little child, four years old, never saw the parents coming back and was the last Neanderthal. Neanderthal man survived for 300,000 years. We modern humans have got a ways to go before we reach that milestone. So maybe, just maybe, there are some lessons for us in what happened to them. Coming up, in Russia, could the mighty mammoth, extinct for millennia, be brought back to life? And in Ireland, we meet a man who believes he has located a graveyard of giants. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So, 
It's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. In a locked room beneath St. Petersburg are the remains of an Ice Age giant recently found in Siberia. And it fits it. That's the head of the mammoth. Yeah, that's terrific. The latest discovery in a uniquely Russian museum of mammoths. Look at the size of this beast. Yeah, sure. 15, 16 feet and around five, six tons. They were colossal creatures, extinct for thousands of years. Just imagine one of these coming towards you. Yes, could move very, very fast. In Russia, Professor Alexei Tikhonov is the mammoth go-to guy, veteran of many expeditions to the snowy wastes of Siberia, digging for bodies frozen in the ice. He has examined some of the most amazing finds of recent years, including this mammoth that made headlines around the world. It was found almost perfectly preserved. Prehistoric people brought to life in the movie 10,000 BC hunted the mammoth for its meat and fur. Oh. And they're still hunting for their tusks. On remote Siberian islands, men search for Ice Age ivory. You have to be lucky to find them, says this hunter. A single tusk like this is worth $100,000 on the black market. Scientists hunt mammoths too, looking for intact DNA in blood and hair to crack the mammoth's genetic code. And as some scientists in Asia are trying to do, bring one of the prehistoric giants back to life by cloning. <laughs> Professor Iritani in Japan is optimistic. It's not so difficult to obtain a good embryo within now few years. DNA expert Professor Tom Gilbert explains how these scientists might do it. The idea is you take an Asian elephant egg cell and you take out the Asian elephant DNA and you put in the mammoth DNA instead. If we can sort of substitute the mammoth DNA with the elephant DNA, maybe we can trick the cell into thinking it's elephant DNA, put back inside an elephant, it starts to divide and grows into what it thinks is an elephant, what actually comes out of it is some kind of mammoth. And if science does manage to clone a mammoth, the Russians even have a place to put it. In northeastern Siberia, you can see thousands, dozens of thousands and thousands of square kilometers of absolutely empty territory. This is Pleistocene Park. It is the brainchild of Professor Sergei Zimov. Here in this vast nature reserve, he has created an authentic Ice Age habitat, complete with wildlife. And all that's missing now, the mammoth. You'd like to see thousands of these roaming Russia again? Yes, of course. You want to create a kind of Jurassic Park? Yes, yes. We're already on the way. As DNA science progresses, it opens many doors, and it's now shedding light on some of the persistent myths that have engaged our imagination over the millennium about the giants that used to walk among us those that still do. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends at Today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, that's your Shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. On the north coast of Ireland is this spectacular landmark, stretching out into the Atlantic Ocean like a monumental stone pathway. This incredible place is called the Giant's Causeway. Legend has it that an Irish giant called Finn McCall built it so he could cross the sea to fight a Scottish rival. You're about to meet a very tall man who says there was a community of giants here and whose new research may shed light on mysterious tales of giants around the world. A little further inland, I meet Brennan. Brendan yeah, hi, Holland. Hi. Welcome to Ireland. He is almost seven feet tall and says real life giants really did exist. That's my distant cousin of 230 years ago. This eight foot skeleton belonged to Brendan's famous ancestor, Charles Byrne, who in the 18th century made his living entertaining crowds in curiosity shows. Brendan, like Byrne, might also have ended up being eight feet tall if the effects of the giant gene he carries had not been controlled. Brendan has also investigated the history of the area and discovered that there was once a whole community of giants, like Byrne, living in these quaint villages. This, in actual fact, is the quarry of the West. And according to reports, this flooded quarry was where they buried their dead, a giant's graveyard. There was an arm bone discovered that far exceeded in length and strength any arm bones ever known to be lifted out of modern graveyards in this country. The thigh, shin bones and teeth were in many instances found as large as those of horses. One particular skull was so big that a local gentleman was able to place the top of the skull over his head with the wig on. Really? Yes. This is a, a real life land of the giants. Indeed. Brendan is not alone. Meet Good Neil morning. Fingleton. <laughs> At 7'10", the former basketball player played big parts on screen. I do believe there would have been exceptionally tall people who would have been kind of put forward for the, for the battle. <laughs> Legends of giants go back thousands of years. There were giants in the earth in those days, says the Bible. It tells of the Nephilim and Goliath. In the Mediterranean, the mysterious and ancient structures called the Gigantiha on Malta were said to have been built by giants. And of course, there's the story of Finn McCall and the Giant's Causeway. Might there be an explanation for these legends? We have an expression in Ireland here. When we have an exciting story, 
We say it doesn't lose anything in the telling. <laughs> So giants would have been very tall people, but became enormous people like Finn McCall. They didn't lose anything in the telling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it was one of history's most celebrated teller of tales, Jonathan Swift, who Brendan believes wrote in this tiny room his most famous story. So here, this is Swift's inner sanctum. Gulliver's Travels. So did the giants who lived close by give Swift the idea for his tall tale. So it's no huge leap of the imagination to assume that this may have been his inspiration for the very famous story Gulliver's Travels. That he might have written a book about giants in a tiny room like this. In this little room, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. We Thank visit you. a nearby pub okay. that Brendan's famous ancestor Charles Byrne would have known. Slauncher. Slauncher. Which means cheers and good luck. But Byrne wasn't so lucky. He died aged just 22. That giant gene comes with a health warning. For the last 40 years, Brendan has been treated for a condition called pituitary gigantism. Had I not been diagnosed and cured at the time I was, I could probably have ended up the same as Byrne. Dead? Dead. No question. The discovery of this rogue gene means that carriers today from these Northern Irish families, Tom and Rosemary Conlon, the Conlons, the McCuskers, who emigrated to America, can be identified early. This is the American branch of the family. But thankfully, most of Brendan's relatives did not inherit the gene. Damien. Give me five, Damien. <laughs> Visiting from Virginia. Bella. Oh, wow. Look at you too, Bella. Today, they have a chance to learn about their unique history. Our very distant cousin, the colossal Irish giant. From their very own gentle giant. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Scotland, on the road north to the rugged highlands, a country of breathtaking landscapes, ancient castles and lakes the Scots call lochs. So this is Loch Ness. This vast loch easily lends itself to legend. A monster? Really? Here at Loch Ness, there have been hundreds of so-called sightings describing a huge and mysterious creature. Up behind us here, a little bit up the loch, 20 odd years ago, sitting beside the loch in my car, and I saw this black hump come out of the water and I have no idea to this day what it was. He saw an object which he described as like an upturned boat. It turned, went against the headwind and disappeared. There were nine witnesses. Ancient Celtic legend tells of a beast in the water and there is a record of an apparent encounter here thousand years ago. But it was during the 1930s that the beast was given a name, the Loch Ness Monster or, more affectionately, Nessie. All over the loch, 
Eyewitnesses described seeing a creature some claimed looked like a prehistoric reptile called a plesiosaur, both in and out of the water. And in one infamous sighting, a couple driving on this road saw a huge creature, maybe 30 feet long, slither in front of them and plunge into the loch. So to understand the lure of the loch, begin with a man who has lived on the shore in a van for almost 30 years. There's, there's a majesty about this place. There's an energy that pours off of here. There's a palpable feeling of, well, it's, it's legend. Steve Feltham scans the surface every day for hours at a time. He too says he has seen the monster. It was like a torpedo going through the water, the size of a car going through there. But does Steve think Nessie is a plesiosaur? Nessie could still turn out to be a dinosaur, but at the moment I see it more likely to turn out to be something like a whale's catfish, the biggest freshwater fish in the world. It grows to about four or five metres long. They live for a hundred years. It's got a smooth back, which is what people describe here. The hump, the upturned boat type hump going through the water. How you doing? How are you? Good, yeah? Hi, nice to meet you. For decades, enthusiasts and even scientists have been searching for facts in this Loch Ness fiction. Skipper Dick Rayner has been investigating the mystery of Loch Ness for 50 years. The thing we were looking for was between 20 and 40 feet long. 40 feet long? Yeah. I think we're going to need a bigger boat. If there is a creature hiding here, Dick says sonar should be the best way to track it down. We're over the deepest part now. Wow, 745 feet. What is that? About halfway down, what is that? It's not a enormous monster appearing on our sonar right there. I don't think so. No. Are you sure? Because that looks pretty... Look, look at that. Over the years, teams of Nessie hunters have used sonar and submarines to search the dark waters of Loch Ness. But the only monster they ever found was this 30-foot Nessie movie prop that sank 50 years ago. Definite fake. Right. Three hay bales covered in tarpaulins. The evidence against there being a monster here has been stacking up. Most of the photos of Nessie are hoaxes. He towed a nice bit of fiberglass behind his boat, but this is the famous one, the iconic picture of Loch Ness. Yes. Right. But what, what people think now is that it's actually this little thing. It's a submarine with a plasticine monster's head on top of it. The last best hope of finding some truth here is perhaps the most bizarrely counterintuitive project of them all. They've been looking for the mythical monster in microscopic particles. That uh, deceptively clear-looking water actually contains an abundance of life. An international scientific team, led by Professor Neil Gemmel from New Zealand, is cracking the Loch Ness code using environmental or eDNA. So what we're getting is a snapshot of life in Loch Ness over the last few days. We've got bacteria in there, we've got microorganisms in there, We've also got traces of larger animals, fish, and perhaps there's something mysterious in there too that hasn't been described by science. Who knows? You've got quite a bit out of the northern basin. Mm -hmm. With the help of a local naturalist, Adrian Schein, who has studied Loch Ness for more than 40 years, the scientists took hundreds of water samples from all over the loch. Back at his university in New Zealand, the samples were analysed by Professor Gemmel and by several other labs around the world. Their results cross-referenced with a gigantic DNA database, producing a complete picture of everything that lives in Loch Ness. All right, well, thank you. Um, a year after we first met him, Professor Gemmel was ready to announce his dramatic findings to the world. Let's get down to it. Is there a plesiosaur in Loch Ness? No. No trace, then, he says, of an ancient dinosaur lurking in the log. No giant catfish DNA, either. But, says Professor Gamel, there is one possibility that may explain all those eyewitness sightings here. Could Nessie be a giant eel? There is large amounts of eel DNA in Loch Ness. Now, is it possible that what people are seeing is a giant eel? 
Well, maybe. It's plausible that there might be one that, that or two, that, that, that grow to extreme size. So, case closed? Of course, you cannot know what you don't know. So the mystery of Loch Ness will surely endure, ensuring that the tourists keep coming back. We came to find a monster, and, um, we did. you know, we did. <laughs> We've got a sighting here. It might be a giant eel. I don't think so. No? Eels don't have legs. And it is, perhaps, the mystery, not the monster, that people cannot turn away from, even in this 21st century, which reflects more on all of us than what's in this loch. Lakes are, in a sense, lost worlds, and especially Loch Ness. It's deep, it's dark, it's cold, it's hostile, and it's big. So it gives us the lost world element, but it is also accessible. And I think it's that combination of mystery and accessibility which has given Loch Ness the cachet which it has. It would be a shame, wouldn't it, in a way, if computers and DNA science took away the mystery? Um, well, you never would, you see, because as long as people want to believe in Loch Ness monsters, there'll be Loch Ness monsters. <laughs> when you are here at dusk, looking out over these dark waters, it's easy to understand why people once feared something lurking beneath. And maybe, even today, we need to believe in monsters and evil so we get to be the good guys. Or perhaps we just like to be scared. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking yeah. who's your favorite okay. character you've ever all played? Right. The unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. My buddy Cal cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do a weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. Wow, y'all look good today. You look actually great today, and we're happy that you tuned into our favorite streaming channel today all day. Yeah, it's good for your skin. It's very <laughs> lovely. We're halfway through the week. Hoda and I are in Studio 1A. You're home. You're watching our digital show today and third.